Chapter 2661 This powerful union of marriage became even more pleasing to the eyes. At the table below, Jared was surrounded by young people himself, his wife, his younger sister and her husband, Ezekiel, and the two children from the president's family. The guys were handsome and tall, while the girls were stunning and poised. The wedding continued until 9 p.m. After a day as a bride, Shirley felt that her feet were red and sore. She was naturally not someone suited to wearing high heels, so even custom-made high heels would leave her feet swollen after prolonged wear. At night, Zacharias brought her back to their residence and personally prepared a basin of hot water for her to soak her feet. She had just removed her makeup. Her long hair was cascading down, and her bare face was emitting a pure radiance. It was hard for anyone to imagine her fierceness when facing adversaries and the valor that ran deep within her. Yet, in front of Zacharias, Shirley simply wanted to be a woman cherished by him alone. Her myriad charms were meant for his eyes only. Zacharias squatted in front of her with his chin resting in his hand. His gaze was fixed on her for who knew how long. The smile on his lips seemed to indicate that he had obtained the world's most precious treasure. It was a genuine sense of pride and happiness from the bottom of his heart. Shirley was just thinking about her performance at the wedding when she accidentally caught her man staring at her. She immediately blushed and reached up to touch her face while asking, is there something on my face? He stood up with a smile, cupped her face, and kissed her gently. You look beautiful. She smiled and reached out her arms to him. Carry me to our room. Roger, my princess, the man responded huskily before lifting her. He first held her in his arms and then wiped her feet before carrying her upstairs to their room. Shirley nestled in his embrace. Tonight was the first time they were making love as husband and wife. A night of boundless passion ensued. The following day, Shirley picked up her phone to check the news. There were congratulatory messages everywhere for them. Despite it being from the media and public, they made her feel truly happy. At the hotel, after representing his father at the wedding banquet and resting for three days, Ezekiel decided to move on to the next destination the international fashion event. He had arranged meetings with several investors in that country. He bid farewell to both the Presgrave family and the Lloyd family before boarding his private jet. Belrose, known as the global fashion capital, was the hub for all things stylish. Big brands and the mainstream fashion industry converged here. Celebrities and fashion icons worldwide preferred to shoot advertisements here to showcase their significance. Harmony was scheduled to shoot an advertisement here. After she escaped back to the country last time, the advertisers weren't pleased and demanded that she shoot several additional advertisements for free. She had no other choice but to focus diligently on her work. Each time she opened her phone, she would see a new round of affectionate photos from her ex-boyfriend, but her emotions didn't fluctuate as much anymore. This incident made her realize that women must have careers and be independent. She had acting skills and earning capacity, and her career was on the rise. What did she need a man for? She broke free from the mentality of love and devoted herself wholeheartedly to making her career a success. Moreover, she declared that she would never fall in love again in this lifetime. She didn't want to have anything to do with men anymore. Harmony's advertisement had been shot two days ago. As she was endorsing a series of products from an international luxury jewelry brand, the advertisement's effects were immediate and remarkable. In just three days, her advertisement was displayed on the roadside's giant screens as a public broadcast. The languid-themed advertisement video featuring Harmony was extremely eye-catching. The gemstone necklace around her neck added a touch of elegance to her appearance. It was rare to see someone wearing gemstones with such sophistication. Harmony achieved what she aimed for there was a unique quality about her that enhanced the appeal of the gemstone necklace. At this moment, four black SUVs came to a halt at a traffic light. Due to a pedestrian suddenly appearing ahead, the driver had to hit the brakes immediately. This startled the man resting against the seat in the back. He opened his eyes and heard the apologies from the driver. I'm sorry, Mr. Weiss. Ezekiel felt slightly annoyed at being awakened, but at that moment, the giant screen outside the window caught his attention. He looked up, and his pupils suddenly contracted as he watched the graceful and alluring girl on the screen. 
She was lounging on the couch like a lazy cat. Her beautiful and mesmerizing collarbone was adorned with a sparkling green gemstone, which enhanced the smoothness of her skin. He couldn't help but desire to place a kiss upon it. Ezekiel murmured softly, it's her. Afterward, a smile tugged at the corners of his lips. Was the world this small? How was it that he could see her at first sight, even in this foreign country? However, this sensation brought a pleasant feeling to his heart, and even the annoyance of being awakened disappeared. Just then, the car was about to move forward. As the car was going past the screen, Ezekiel suddenly spoke up. Reverse the car by a hundred meters, then turn around and stop. I want to rest here. The bodyguard had noticed Ezekiel lost in thought while staring at the screen earlier, so he complied with Ezekiel's request by stopping the car at the best viewing distance from the screen. He noticed that the previous advertisement had finished playing and the screen was now playing another one, but surprisingly, he had the patience to sit here and wait for Harmony's advertisement. Sure enough, Harmony's smooth and alluring advertisement played two minutes later. Ezekiel watched it attentively while admiring her gaze, her smile, and even the strands of her hair in the video that emanated an appealing aura. Ezekiel rested his chin on his hand while watching for more than 10 minutes. After watching the footage several times, he finally instructed the bodyguard to drive the car back to the hotel. He wondered if he could meet her here. Strangely, he found himself looking forward to it. Ezekiel never idolized celebrities, nor did he feel anything for any celebrity, but strangely, this girl managed to stir up intense curiosity. Harmony was certainly unaware that her trip back to the country would unveil a major fan unexpectedly. At that moment, she was packing in the hotel room when her phone rang. She paused in packing and reached out to answer the call. Hello. Harmony, don't return home yet. I'm on my way over. I have insider information. We can get into fashion week, and we might even crash the red carpet. Sarah, are you kidding me? You want me to crash the red carpet? I can't do that. Harmony rejected the idea. Even though she wanted fame, she couldn't muster the courage for such an act. Anyway, hold off on going back. I'm boarding my flight now. If that doesn't work out, we can take a few pictures there, fix them up when we return, and still make good use of them. Harmony sighed and could only delay her return temporarily. She was exhausted from her recent advertisement shoots. Just then, she received another message on her phone. This time, it was from a fashion blogger she had previously collaborated with. Harmony, do you know that Ruben Nagy and Catalina Martin are also heading to Fashion Week? Are you still there? Harmony read the message and felt a pang in her chest. However, it was no surprise that they were coming. Catalina was in this industry, so she would surely attend these high-profile events. As for Ruben, he was now connected to Catalina's resources and had landed two international watch advertisements, so he could also make an appearance as a fashion darling. Although Harmony wasn't angry, she gripped her phone tightly and felt a sense of frustration. She was unable to return home and did not want to stay holed up in the hotel. Despite having an assistant accompanying her, she decided to go out for a stroll alone. She was fluent in Chinese, so she wouldn't have any trouble communicating. Harmony wandered casually. She hailed a cab and arrived at the streets near Fashion Week, where she could see artists from various countries coming to take photos and capture moments. She might even bump into her idols if she was lucky. She wasn't very old, she was only 24. She started acting at the age of 14. Despite quietly working in the industry for 10 years, it was only in the last couple of years that she gained fame. However, she still maintained the mindset of a newcomer in her heart. If there was a role, Harmony would take it, if not, she would live her life well. She observed a few beautiful girls striking poses for pictures. Each of them had both the figure and the face. Even if one was exceptionally beautiful here, one wouldn't feel superior. The saying that, there is always someone better, suited this situation perfectly. Harmony stood at 1.66 meters. She was wearing a long down jacket with a scarf and a beanie. It made her appear like a silkworm. Oh, over there, it's Jonah Chan. A scream rang out, and a few Asian girls could be seen running. They chased after someone while shouting that name. 
Upon seeing the scene, Harmony remembered that Jonah was also one of her idols. She followed the footsteps of these fans and ran in that direction as well. She transformed herself into a loyal fan. Soon, they spotted the man being surrounded by people. He was in his early thirties but had already won the Best Actor Award two years in a row. He was considered a perfect male artist by the entertainment industry. Harmony's gaze was full of admiration as she looked at the back of the man. She smiled. It was a joyful experience being able to meet her idol on this chilly street. It felt like life had become a bit more fulfilling. She turned around and walked aimlessly in another direction. At 18, her parents died in a car accident just when she had received the admission notice from the film academy. She was alone all of a sudden. In the blink of an eye, it had been five years. She thought she had something precious love, but it vanished like a bubble in an instant. Harmony's insight into life was that in this world, there was no one absolutely reliable, she could only rely on herself. In the evening, Sarah arrived. She had been constantly making calls and using connections. Finally, she obtained two entry tickets, but these were entry tickets restricted to the work area, not the red carpet area. Harmony, look, we got the tickets. We can shine on the red carpet tomorrow. I don't want to gate crash. I don't have the qualifications or the capability for it. It's like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole. All become a joke. Harmony resisted strongly. Sarah was her manager, and she saw Sarah as family. My dear lady, do you know how much exposure you can gain by attending the red carpet event just once? You'll not be the only one who has done it. Tons of people have, and it's a skill. You must go. There's no discussion about it, Sarah commanded firmly. At that moment, Catalina swirled her wine glass in a five-star hotel while listening to her subordinate's report. We've sent the tickets to Sarah through the channels. They will definitely go in tomorrow and also attempt to gatecrash the red carpet event. That's good. I want to make Harmony lose her reputation at the red carpet event tomorrow. Catalina, do you have a plan? I'll make Harmony's popularity vanish instantly and make her fans look down on her and mock her. What right does a scheming girl like her have to be admired? Catalina, are you intentionally letting them gatecrash? Not only do they need to gatecrash, but I also want footage of her walking the red carpet. I'll make her look miserable and laughable. If she wants to steal my endorsement, she'll have to pay the price. Catalina spoke fiercely. Someone without background or support trying to survive in this circle should expect to be stepped on. After the subordinate left, Ruben emerged from the bathroom and circled his arms around Catalina's waist. She wrapped her arms around his neck. Ruben, do you still love Harmony? Disgust flickered in Ruben's eyes. How could I possibly love her? Back then, I was blind. I won't even spare a glance at a girl like her, who doesn't hesitate to use any means to achieve her goals in the future. Whose coattails did she manage to ride on? Do I know this big shot? Upon thinking back to the man he had encountered at the hotel the last time, he recalled a young and wealthy figure who remained an absolute stranger. Despite his many years in the industry, he had never seen the man before. It should be someone from outside the entertainment circle. Catalina thought to herself that she need not worry about those outside the entertainment circle because this circle had its own rules. Plus, there was an undeniable emphasis placed on ranking within this circle. So, artists like Harmony, who had to start from the bottom, were only fit to be trampled upon by others. Let's wait for the show. I will drag her all the way down to the Z list. Once I'm done with her, no producers would bother hiring her. Catalina, I hope she disappears from this industry. Ruben was someone who held grudges close to his heart. Therefore, he genuinely wanted to see Harmony end up with nothing after all her efforts. In the luxurious presidential suite under the bustling night, Ezekiel stood by the floor-to-ceiling window and gazed at a nearby giant screen. Harmony's advertisement would flicker on this screen every two minutes. Soon, he realized he had been standing by the window and lost in thought for half an hour. The girl on the screen possessed a charm that made it seem as though he was the moth being beguiled by her flame. Her red lips in the footage reminded him of the soft and sweet lips he had kissed. It left him wanting more. The coffee in his hand had turned cold. 
Nonetheless, he had been so engrossed in watching the distant billboard that he hadn't even noticed. Ezekiel took a sip of the now stale coffee and felt momentarily stunned. How had he lost himself in thoughts about this girl for so long? He glanced at the bustling city center outside the window. Then, he was suddenly struck by inspiration as he picked up his phone and dialed his assistant before asking, look someone up for me. I want to know which hotel she's staying at. Sure, Mr. Weiss. Ezekiel sent Harmony's name via text. He was unsure why he suddenly wanted to know more about her. If Ezekiel was just an ordinary Joe, it would be impossible for him to get this information immediately. However, since he was Ezekiel, obtaining this piece of information was as easy as pie. As long as he gave out his orders, his subordinates would handle it for him diligently and with remarkable efficiency. Sure enough, his subordinate sent him a hotel address in less than five minutes. In fact, they had even marked down the room number in black and white. Ezekiel curled his lips into a smile. Even though it was merely an ordinary hotel, he suddenly felt an interest in staying there for the night. He didn't even bother notifying his bodyguards as he made the call, booked the room next to Harmony's, and headed there. Then, he promptly took his car keys and drove off in his unique sports car from the underground parking lot. Harmony and Sarah were sharing a room in the hotel. They were discussing some work-related matters. Sarah was 39 years old and single. She had dedicated half her life to the entertainment industry and was now placing all her hopes for wealth and success on this artist she had single-handedly nurtured. One couldn't deny the fact that Harmony owed her success to Sarah's unwavering support and her own hard work. Harmony flipped through the news and came across another rumor about her. Some sharp-tongued influencers, in their quest for attention, dared to fabricate all sorts of baseless rumors. They claimed she secured the female lead role in that Asian drama by renting an apartment with the director for half a month. There were even rumors suggesting she accepted a wealthy individual as a sugar daddy and was being promoted because of it. These people have no boundaries in spreading lies. Harmony placed the tablet aside and felt a headache coming on. Sarah came over, glanced at the news, and snorted disdainfully. They lose nothing by spreading rumors. You're famous now, so they'll naturally target you for attention. Don't mind them. If you want to be successful in this industry, you'll have to remember that these are just sticks and stones. I need to make a call. You should rest early, Sarah said as she scrolled through her contacts. Harmony's stomach grumbled loudly. Sarah had controlled her food intake at dinner just so she could fit into the evening dress Sarah had rented for her tomorrow. Harmony didn't have the type of body that gained weight easily from eating. Frankly, she felt really uncomfortable starving herself like this. All she could think of at the moment were the pastries from the coffee shop downstairs. She licked her lips and thought greedily, I should seize the moment and have a couple of croissants. Otherwise, how am I going to endure this long night with my stomach being so uncooperative? Harmony eagerly pushed herself off the couch. She was determined to brave the scolding she would undoubtedly receive from Sarah the instant she decided to go through with her sneaky plan. She grabbed a short down jacket to cover herself. Her waist-length hair was still damp from the recent wash, giving her an unadorned look. Honestly, she seemed like a fresh-faced university student, radiating a youthful vigor with every fiber of her being. She opened the door quietly as she carefully listened to Sarah's voice in the adjacent resting area. Then, she muffled her mischievous giggles as she slipped away toward the elevator. Once she arrived at the cafe's floor, she hastily descended upon the establishment after leaving the elevator. The owner was about to close the shop, but she managed to buy the last two pieces of sweet treats. She intended to eat them there. Alas, she had no choice but to covertly sneak her goodies back to the hotel because the cafe was about to close. Still, she figured she might as well nibble on her pastries on the way back. She planned to finish it off once she returned to the hotel to avoid getting scolded. She pressed the button and took another big bite of her bread upon arriving at the elevator. Just then, a tall figure emerged from the hotel's front desk and sauntered toward the elevator. As the doors were about to close, the man immediately pressed the open button to prevent them from sliding shut. Harmony instinctively looked up when she saw someone else trying to enter. She couldn't help but scrutinize them out of curiosity. 
Nevertheless, her eyes widened in shock the second her brain registered just who that person was. How could it be him? Goodness gracious, she actually bumped into the man who found her lost gemstone in the elevator. Talk about coincidence. Even Ezekiel hadn't expected to run into her as soon as he arrived at the hotel. He stepped in gracefully with his arms crossed and smiled naturally as he greeted her. Hi. Harmony still had a big bite of bread in her mouth, which made her cheeks puffy. So, she resembled an adorable and gluttonous squirrel. Hi, she mumbled a greeting and quickly chewed on the bread in her mouth as she tried to swallow it down. Strangely, the man's deep, captivating, and beautiful eyes continued to fixate on her. When he caught sight of her nearly choking in her haste to finish her food, his lips curved slightly into a smile. It seemed as if he was doing his best not to burst into laughter. She was so enchanting in the advertisement. She looked just like a lazy elf bathed under the sunlight. Nevertheless, it seemed that she was cute and down to earth in reality. Harmony decided to feign ignorance. So, she leaned against the corner of the elevator, lowering her head as she continued to munch on her bread. You don't remember me? The man asked with a hint of amusement in his tone. She raised her head and retorted, do we know each other? Ezekiel raised an eyebrow and refuted, we don't, but we've kissed. Harmony flushed crimson, she couldn't deny that fact. To make matters even more embarrassing, it wasn't just one kiss. It was two. She kissed him first, and he returned the kiss with equal fervor. Sir, are you mistaking me for someone else? She decided to feign ignorance. No. Miss Harmony Mayo, we did kiss, Ezekiel said with a huff. He had never been so disregarded before. She was surprised when he mentioned her name. How do you know my name? She couldn't recall ever telling him her name. If I want to know something, I'll know it. Just as he finished speaking, the elevator chimed and slid open. She hurriedly stepped out of the confined space the minute she noticed that she had arrived at her floor. Just as she took a few steps, she discovered that the man had also followed her out. She felt flustered and was taken aback. Why did he also get off the elevator? Could he be a stalker? It didn't seem fitting for a stalker to be this handsome. Why are you following me? She asked, feeling panicked. Ezekiel smirked. Is it possible that I also live on this floor? Harmony blushed and apologized sheepishly, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. Fortunately, she managed to make it to her hotel room's door just then. Just adjacent to her room, the man swiped his card and intentionally fiddled with it when he caught her staring, indicating that he wasn't a stalker. He was genuinely a guest who just happened to be staying there as well. Harmony's face turned even redder. God, take me. Ever since she became a celebrity, she had become a bit jumpy. She often assumed someone was following her due to her paranoia. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She apologized repeatedly before quickly swiping her card to enter her room. Ezekiel glanced at her with a smile before entering his room. Compared to his presidential suite, this room was small and somewhat crude. Yet, the interesting girl next door made up for everything. As Harmony entered her room, Sarah was already looking for her. The instant Sarah saw her, the woman bombarded her with questions, asking, where did you go? It's already so late. Then, she noticed the bread in Harmony's hand and continued in admonishment, didn't I tell you to eat less? The evening gown for tomorrow is excess. You probably won't fit into it after eating that. If I can't wear it, then I won't go. Harmony replied. After all, she hadn't planned on attending the red carpet event anyway. No, you have to go. This is a rare opportunity. You are not allowed to let this golden opportunity slip your fingers, Sarah insisted sternly. Guess who's living next door to us? Who? The man who found my gemstone back in Dansbury. He's staying next door. Isn't this such a coincidence? Harmony started gossiping immediately. Sarah became excited. What? It's him. Isn't he very wealthy? Why is he staying here? Yeah, I can't make sense of it either. He looks wealthy. Plus, the hotel we're in now only costs a few hundred bucks a night. It was an ordinary hotel. It was so ordinary that the man didn't fit in at all. Could he have fallen on hard times? Sarah speculated and was already thinking, as a talent scout, that this person might be a great find. 
Maybe she could sign him and turn him into a superstar one day. Harmony, let's have a chat with him. Ah, no way. I don't want to. Harmony's first thought was to refuse. She didn't know what was wrong with her because her heart would race whenever she laid her eyes on this man. She had seen countless handsome men and worked with them over the years, so she genuinely found her reaction utterly baffling. Come on, accompany me. I want to see if I can sign him on. With his looks and physique, it's a waste if he's not in showbiz. After that, Sarah tugged her along, fully ready to start persuading him. Sarah, isn't this inappropriate? What if he doesn't want to be disturbed? Harmony tried to advise Sarah to think things through. Unfortunately, Sarah was determined to get her hands on someone with such outstanding looks. She opened the door and stepped out Harmony had no choice but to watch Sarah pull off yet another sales pitch. Sarah didn't falter as she had a great deal of experience and encountered several people in her line of work. She stood at the door and knocked. Harmony's heartstrings tightened with each knock as she thought in despair, Sarah was going to make a fool of herself. That man would never agree to something like this. The moment the door swung open, Sarah had never been more certain of her decision to make him a star. Although she had met far too many people to count in her lifetime, she was determined to convince this man to enter show business. He was too perfect and too handsome. His looks surpassed every male artist she had ever seen. His demeanor was impeccable as well. Plus, he had a natural aristocratic aura that wasn't faked. It was innate. When he stepped into a room, he exuded a distinct aura of regal nobility. Hi, sir. I'm from the room next door. Can we have a chat? Ezekiel looked at Sarah as he rested his hands on the door frame while peeking a glance at the neighboring room. He soon caught sight of Harmony's half-exposed head. When she noticed him looking, she quickly retreated into her shell like a terrified turtle. Then, Harmony heard a deep and magnetic voice say, Sure. Can I come into your room? It's more convenient if I go to yours, Ezekiel replied. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Please come in, Sarah said enthusiastically before opening her own door and inviting him in. Harmony sat awkwardly on the couch. She did not expect him to actually play along with Sarah. Sarah led him in. His tall figure made the hotel room even more cramped. Sarah gestured for him to sit on the couch, forcing Harmony to scoot aside in order to make some space for him. Sarah then sat on the edge of the bed and said, Sir, let me introduce you. This is my artist, Harmony Mayo. I believe you two have met before. Ezekiel smiled and nodded. Yes, we have. Harmony also smiled slightly. Hello. What's your last name, sir? Can we get to know each other? Sarah asked. I'm Ezekiel Weiss, he said, casually introducing himself. Mr. Weiss, may I ask about your current occupation? Sarah felt a subtle triumph. The negotiation seemed to be going well. Ezekiel glanced at Harmony beside him and, on a whim, said, I'm currently unemployed. Just wandering around. Harmony turned to him in surprise. You're unemployed? Yeah, I'm jobless. Ezekiel nodded. Mr. Weiss, here's the thing. I believe you possess exceptional qualities in various aspects. If you're interested, you can become my artist. I'll be willing to sign you at a generous price, Sarah proposed bluntly. Sorry, I don't plan on becoming an artist. Ezekiel declined politely. Sarah was momentarily taken aback, not expecting this handsome man to reject the offer. However, she discerned a nuance Ezekiel's gaze occasionally shifted toward harmony. Could this gorgeous guy be interested in her artist? Sarah's sharp and incisive gaze seemed to penetrate through the layers of the situation. Even though this young man might be currently without a job, he had to hail from a wealthy background. His custom-tailored suit and high-end watch were far from ordinary. He appeared here despite affording a seven-star presidential suite in his home country. Sarah had instantly seen through the essence of the situation. It seemed Ezekiel wasn't here because he was down and out, but he was here to pursue harmony. Even though Sarah was certain that was the case, she remained composed. Well, that's a shame. No worries, I'm not interested in forcing someone to do my bidding. Harmony and I will attend Fashion Week tomorrow. Then, we'll be returning to Dansbury the day after tomorrow. Ezekiel raised an eyebrow in interest. You're leaving the day after tomorrow. 
Sarah remarked lightly, yes, most likely. At that juncture, Sarah was interrupted by a call from Harmony's assistant. She deliberately picked up the call and answered with feigned irritation, exclaiming, hello, what? Our artist's red carpet participation has been cancelled. How can you people be so incompetent? You can't even arrange a spot for us. What kind of operation are you running? Sarah glared at her phone in anger before turning to Ezekiel. Mr. Weiss, do you perhaps have the means to ensure Harmony graces the red carpet at Fashion Week? The puzzled Harmony widened her beautiful eyes, wondering what Sarah was up to. Why was she seeking his help? Ezekiel didn't even hesitate as he answered, I can make it happen. That's great. Thank you so much. Sarah exclaimed with enthusiasm. I'll be leaving Harmony in your care tomorrow. Please be her plus one on the red carpet. Ezekiel nodded. Even though he knew Sarah was using him, he didn't see the need to expose and refuse her. Instead, he anticipated tomorrow to be an intriguing day. Well, we won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Weiss, Sarah said while swinging the door open. Ezekiel stood up, nodded, and made his exit. Once he left, Harmony seized the opportunity to inquire, Sarah, what was all that about? Sarah grasped her arm, a gleam of delight in her eyes. Look, Mr. Weiss is no ordinary man. Although he claims to be unemployed, he has to be some rich young master with power and influence. Our red carpet event tomorrow is as good as secured with him by our side. We won't have to depend on others anymore. How can you be so sure he's wealthy? Harmony questioned sharply. I could tell the minute I saw his attire, Sarah replied, a hint of pride in her voice. We barely know him. Isn't it inappropriate to burden him like this? Harmony was still hesitant. We need to make the most of every resource if we want to achieve success in this industry. If there are connections we can use, we should never let it slip away. Forget about who he is or how well we know him. The only thing that matters is whether he is of use to us, Sarah asserted. Then, she inquired, nothing happened when you met him last time, right? Harmony's mind whirred, recalling those two unexpected kisses. She hastily denied it. No, nothing happened. Although Harmony's answer made it seem as though the two were strangers, Sarah was no fool. Instead, she was astute enough to understand that Ezekiel's appearance here was undoubtedly linked to Harmony. Otherwise, how coincidental could it be for him to end up in the room next door? Ezekiel took out his phone in the adjacent room and dialed his assistant's number. Get me a spot on the red carpet for tomorrow's fashion week. Mr. Weiss, are you also planning to walk the red carpet? I'm taking someone with me, Ezekiel replied. After the passionate night between Catalina and Ruben in the luxurious confines of a five-star hotel, he devoted himself entirely to her as he lay in bed with her. Although he was merely deemed a useless man who had to use his body to climb up the ranks, he cared little for such judgments. Instead, he was driven solely by pursuing a promising future. Catalina, somewhat content with Ruben's performance that night, smiled and spoke, Ruben, I can't wait to see Harmony's downfall. I have my internet ghostwriters ready. Once her video gets back to Dansbury, we'll spread it widely. With her ability, she won't stand a chance against the public backlash, let's sit back and watch the entire internet turn against her. Reuben, kissing her cheek, complimented, you're remarkable, sweetheart. Harmony is no match for you. You should show some effort, too. Improve your acting skills so you can handle and won't miss out on the roles I secure for you, scolded Catalina. Since Reuben was a gigolo, he had no choice but to endure her treatment with a grin. Even if he didn't like hearing such words, he clung to Catalina playfully as he murmured, Okay, I'll improve my acting skills so I don't disappoint my lovely wife. Catalina, a connoisseur of men, affectionately patted him with a smile. Good. I'll be waiting for the day you win the Best Actor Award. On that day, I'll be your true wife. The smile on Ruben's face froze momentarily. The Best Actor Award was still far from his reach, and he had no noteworthy works under his belt. On the contrary, Harmony had unexpectedly secured the Best Female Award this year, casting him in the shadow of her apparent success. This made him look as incompetent as her boyfriend. This was one of the reasons Reuben held disdain for Harmony. 
she made him the subject of ridicule among those people who deemed him inferior to her. Of course, he wouldn't show these feelings before falling out with Harmony. However, when Harmony kissed and hugged another man in front of him that day, it was as if the darker side he had hidden all this while had burst forth. He resented it all. He wanted Harmony out of the industry, forced back to the low-level status from which she had emerged, with no place to stand in this circle. Reuben fantasized about the day he would have a standing in the industry. Once that happened, Harmony, who was desperate for survival, would come crawling to him, much like a beggar seeking mercy. Ever since she was orphaned and alone, she had no one in her corner with both parents gone. With a background like hers, wasn't she practically destined to be a target for mistreatment? As a second-generation star with parents of prominent status in the industry, Catalina initially had set her sights on clinching a prestigious jewelry advertisement. Yet, Harmony emerged out of nowhere, snatching the coveted brand from under her nose and turning her into a laughingstock within her social circles. At this moment, Catalina's viewpoint allowed her an unobstructed view of the colossal screen displaying the scrolling advertisement. As she observed Harmony's graceful figure, Catalina tightly grasped her glass of red wine. The spotlight of that advertisement, so dazzling in the eyes of the public, should have rightfully belonged to her. Reuben, emerging from the bed to encircle her waist, rested his face on her shoulder. Let's go to sleep. I can't sleep, Catalina replied with a touch of indifference. Reuben lifted his head to check her expression in response. His gaze followed hers to the distant advertisement screen, where Harmony's silhouette appeared. The intense surge of passionate emotions he had just vented on Catalina rushed back. Reuben harbored a complex mix of love and unfulfilled desire towards Harmony. Over the years, Harmony had firmly held her ground, refusing to give in. She insisted on reserving her first time for marriage. Now, Reuben couldn't help but feel that he had been played for a fool. Why had he shown her so much respect? Now that he had lost her, he realized that the platonic love affair they had had for five years was too much of a loss. Of course, he hadn't been idle privately and had pursued several young models while she was busy with her career. At that moment, Reuben silently contemplated, one day, I'll make you beg to return to my side, Harmony. In this life, I'll only be content once I've slept with you. Sarah had already succumbed to slumber as the night unfolded in the hotel. Meanwhile, Harmony found herself grappling with insomnia. With Ezekiel staying in the next room, the thought of him just beyond the wall made her wonder what he was doing. Is he asleep? Then, she unexpectedly caught a faint sound of running water from the adjacent room. The hotel's soundproofing was poor, so the sound of someone showering next door had somehow seeped through the cracks. A soft chuckle escaped Harmony's lips. Then, she glanced at the time. It was already 1 a.m. Yet, this man was only taking a shower now. What's he doing? Could it be, a mischievous notion crept into Harmony's mind. Her cheeks flushed with warmth as her mind ran wild. Still, she couldn't halt the swirling thoughts and vivid scenarios that danced through her imagination. Ah, men and their antics were no mystery to her. This was also thanks to her early entry into the industry and acting career. Can it be that this man is indulging himself? Harmony quickly reigned in her wandering thoughts as fantasizing about him in this way felt a tad inappropriate. In the next room, Ezekiel was indeed taking a shower. He had just wrapped up a meticulous review of the latest investment plan. So, time had slipped through his fingers when he was immersed in his work. Before he knew it, it had already gotten this late. As for Harmony, she wasn't sure when she had finally drifted off to sleep. She was entangled in a dream, soaring through the air and eventually floating into Ezekiel's window, peering in just as he prepared to shed his garments. Just as she was about to see what Ezekiel had under the sheets, her soul was forcefully dragged back into her body. Sarah had shaken her in an attempt to rouse her from her slumber. Harmony, wake up. It's late. We need to head over for the photo shoot. How could Harmony bear to wake up just like that? Her eyelids remained shut as she pleaded, Sarah, give me another two minutes. Let me sleep a bit more, just a bit. After that, she immediately plunged back into the fantasy, trying to return to that enticing scene. Just as she teetered on the brink of once again reveling in the allure of that handsome physique, 
Sarah, unsparing in her resolve, heartlessly shook her awake. You don't have time to sleep. Get your butt out of the bed. My goodness, you still need to get dressed. Harmony blinked her eyes open, sitting up as disappointment overwhelmed her. She was somewhat baffled about her current surroundings as she tried to make sense of reality once more. That dream from last night really wore her out. It felt like she struggled all night just to glimpse Ezekiel's physique what an utterly absurd dream. Just then, a knock on the door interrupted them. Sarah blurted in confusion, could it be Mr. Weiss from next door? Ah, Harmony swiftly burrowed back into the covers and buried her face in the blanket. She urgently told Sarah, whatever you do, please don't let him in, Sarah. She didn't want him to see her in this ghastly state early in the morning. Sarah opened the door in amusement. Sure enough, the refreshingly charming Ezekiel was standing right there. She greeted him with a warm smile, Mr. Weiss, good morning. Good morning. I have something to attend to. Here's my business card. Let Miss Mayo know I'll see her on the red carpet at 3 p.m. Of course, thank you so much, Mr. Weiss. Take care. Sarah happily accepted his business card and saw him off to the elevator. Then, she joyfully kissed the golden business card after watching him leave. Now, neither of them would face the embarrassment of getting chased off the red carpet. Sarah quickly scanned Ezekiel's business card, a simple display of a Chinese company's name with, Ezekiel Weiss, in parentheses below it. Beneath it, a personal phone number added an air of significance despite its simple design. Harmony naturally overheard Ezekiel's words. His deep, magnetic voice resonated forcefully in her heart. As she reflected on her dream from the previous night, she couldn't help but find her attitude inappropriate. Wake up, my lady. Look, Mr. Weiss personally gave you his business card. He's looking forward to your red carpet journey with him this afternoon. Sarah dragged her off the bed. At this moment, Sarah couldn't help but wish she were twenty years younger. Ah, youth and romance. Harmony took the golden card that felt more like lacquered gold than paper. Sarah, who is he exactly? Harmony asked curiously. Isn't there writing on it? It should be the name of his company. Still, I have to confess, I've never heard of this company's name before, Sarah admitted, her knowledge limited even to globally renowned enterprises. Hurry up and save his number on your phone, lest you won't be unable to find him when you walk the red carpet in the afternoon, Sarah urged her. Harmony grabbed her phone and saved Ezekiel's number. She also placed his name card inside the pocket of her purse as a souvenir. Later, Harmony went to a dress rental store Sarah had made an appointment with. As this store had some off-season collections from various big fashion brands, it was frequented by many artists. If one was lucky, they could even get the ones from the current fashion season. It was just that the rental fee was pricey compared to the off-season ones. This time, Sarah decided to spend $75,000 to doll Harmony up. She chose an off-season evening dress from a fashion brand. After Harmony tried it on, she took her to go shopping nearby. Since the red carpet event would start at 3 p.m., they didn't have to rush. After all, the venue of the fashion week was just nearby. Thus, Harmony and Sarah took the opportunity to shop in the mall. As Sarah usually liked buying bags from high-end clothing brands, she couldn't bring herself to move away when she saw a bag that caught her eye. When Harmony saw that Sarah was staring at an item displayed in a high-end fashion store, Harmony couldn't help but remind her, Sarah, you have yet to pay off your car and house loans. It's better not to look at these. Sarah took her words into consideration before coming to a decision. Then, she dragged Harmony along as she said, let's take a look. There's nothing illegal about browsing. So, just take it as window shopping for fun. Hence, Sarah pulled Harmony into the store. However, they bumped into their enemies, Reuben and Catalina, as soon as they entered the store lounge. At this moment, Reuben was accompanying Catalina as they sat on the lounge chairs. Catalina immediately spotted the two who entered the store through her keen eyesight. Wow, it seems that shops really let anyone in nowadays. Since Sarah didn't expect to encounter them today, she held Harmony's hand and said, Harmony, let's leave. Some people have the courage to enter when they can't even afford to purchase a single item. How embarrassing, Catalina mocked once more. 
Harmony took a deep breath upon hearing Catalina's disdainful words. Then, she turned around and retorted, it's none of your business. Harmony, I know damn well about your financial status. You can't afford any of the bags here, Reuben sneered out of the blue. Harmony had spent nearly all her money on the apartment she just bought. What's more, she took out a loan of $450,000. Her apartment's monthly mortgage is enough to force her to keep signing contracts for terrible drama roles. Reuben, I didn't know you have a sugar addiction as I wasn't wealthy enough to be your sugar mommy before. However, I suppose your sugar addiction is satisfied now. Why? Because you have the sweetest sugar mommy beside you, Harmony snapped mercilessly. Reuben's face instantly reddened with anger. Harmony, what the hell are you blabbering about? He shouted, losing his gentlemanly temperament. Sarah forcefully dragged Harmony out of the store. Ignore them, let's just continue with our shopping spree. Truthfully, Harmony wanted to find a coffee shop to rest her legs because she hadn't slept well the night before. Meanwhile, Reuben's face remained reddened with anger. Catalina's eyes were filled with a hint of disgust as she jerked her head away from him. Even so, she couldn't afford to dump Reuben for now because he had just signed a contract with her mother's company. He had even signed some contracts for several drama roles. Don't worry, she will be humiliated on the red carpet later, Catalina comforted him. Reuben held back his resentment and nodded. How dare Harmony make me look bad in front of Catalina? I definitely won't spare her if I have the chance to humiliate her in the future. At this moment, Ezekiel returned to the Seven Star Hotel and was discussing the affairs regarding the cooperative deal with his client. Yet, he couldn't help but sneak glances at his watch while he was having lunch with the client. It seemed like he had something important that he couldn't pass up. Mr. Weiss, I'll let you get on with your work then, the client spoke with a smile after noticing his anxious state. Ezekiel nodded, rose to his feet, and said, I'll treat you to a meal again next time. Then, he trotted outside. It's already 2 p.m., and the red carpet walk will start from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Celebrities won't be able to walk the red carpet if they fail to arrive at the venue on time. Mr. Weiss, there's no need to rush. The time rule doesn't apply to us. We will walk the red carpet when we make it there, Miles, Ezekiel's assistant, comforted him. I have promised to meet her at 3 p.m. What if I'm late and she has walked the red carpet without me? Ezekiel said, his good-looking face actually tinged with worry. Hence, Miles had no choice but to immediately arrange for the convoy to set off and head along the road toward the Fashion Week's venue. As for the situation at the venue, grand preparations were already in progress. Besides, there was a particularly eye-catching red carpet rolled down the middle, which was exclusively available for invited celebrities. Chapter 2671 the total length was about 984 feet, and the artistic decorations on both sides portrayed a sense of statutory declaration. Currently, journalists from all over the world were present as they readied their equipment. They already had their cameras on standby, ready to take the best pictures to hit their target for the month. After all, the celebrities who could walk this red carpet this evening stood for their identity and status in the film and television industry. Since the red carpet event also acted as a large-scale fashion show, whereby fashion designers from around the world would gather and showcase their masterpieces, those who could walk the red carpet were undoubtedly the top international celebrities. So, it wouldn't be an understatement to claim that these individuals were the best celebrities available from various countries. Catalina only had the chance to walk the red carpet this evening because her mother had received two invitations. Hence, she could afford to take Reuben with her. Moreover, she was inclined to turn him into a top celebrity. The bodyguards were also very busy today. Moreover, they had to prevent random, uninvited celebrities from trespassing and piggybacking on the significance of the red carpet. Still, several celebrities tried their luck to walk a few steps on the red carpet. It didn't even matter if they got kicked out as the photos they uploaded to their social media accounts to keep their fans in their home country posted would still cause a massive stir. Ezekiel's convoy suddenly rolled to a stop. The road was so packed with cars that their group couldn't get through. So, his car was sandwiched between them. What's going on? 
Ezekiel frowned. Mr. Weiss, we're stuck in traffic congestion, Miles immediately reported. Ezekiel glanced through the car window upon hearing that. Then, he glanced at his watch and saw that it was already 2.50 p.m. How much longer? Ezekiel asked, growing impatient. It's unclear at the moment. Mr. Weiss, please be patient. Just then, he discovered through the car window that a lot of people who were stuck in the traffic got out of their cars and walked. Therefore, he couldn't help but frown, asking, why are these people getting out of their cars and walking? The venue of the Fashion Week isn't far from here. It's only 0.62 miles away. They probably plan to walk there, Miles explained lightly. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard the sound of the car door being pushed open behind him. When he turned around and saw what happened, he couldn't help but jump in his seat, yelling, Mr. Weiss, Mr. Weiss. He immediately followed suit, exited the car, and saw Ezekiel sauntering down the sidewalk. The bodyguards, who were in the car behind them, instantly got out as well. Four followed Ezekiel while Miles quickly kept up. Ezekiel followed the crowd and walked toward the Fashion Week's venue. At this moment, by the fountain 164 feet away from the red carpet, Harmony looked at the time and asked Sarah, he will come, right? Don't worry, I believe he will be here. Harmony observed the large crowd that was approaching the venue. Among them were fans, journalists, celebrities, and several managing teams. The grand yet regal scene had turned into a completely chaotic mess. Even though the event management had done their best in terms of crowd control, and the spot they currently stood was only strictly for those with a work pass, it was still overcrowded. With celebrities and staff from all over the world taking up a great deal of space, those relatively famous celebrities in Dansbury were merely passers-by here. As Harmony wore an oversized trench coat with nothing but an evening dress underneath, she couldn't help but shiver as soon as the chilly breeze brushed against her skin. Honestly, she was fairly certain that she looked rather disheveled at the moment. To make matters worse, she had stumbled upon Catalina and Ruben, who had just exited the car and passed by, instead of Ezekiel. Catalina wore the latest haute couture red dress with some delicate makeup, exuding an extraordinarily noble vibe. She was holding Ruben's arm, who also wore a haute couture suit, and walked up to Harmony proudly like a peacock. What a coincidence. I can't believe I would bump into you here. See that red carpet? We'll walk on it gracefully while holding Ruben's arm soon enough. As for an unimportant celebrity like you, well, you can't do anything besides watch us walk the red carpet with envy, Catalina said, attempting to provoke Harmony. Don't get carried away, Catalina. Harmony still has plenty of room for development. She will walk this red carpet as well, Sarah retorted. Ha, you can't even get your hands on good movie roles now. Yet, you're still dreaming about your future prospects. Sarah, do you honestly think I don't know your real status in this industry? You're nothing but someone who used to be my mom's subordinate, Catalina refuted mercilessly. An enraged Harmony said, Catalina, please learn to respect others. Listen here, Harmony. Anyone who dares to rob me of my endorsement deals always suffers a miserable ending. You are not the exception to that rule. Do expect to get spurned once you return to Dansbury. Harmony, aren't you the best at claiming ties with the big shots? So, where is this big shot of yours? Reuben asked as a flicker of disdain flashed in his eyes. Harmony bit her rosy lips and looked at the man she once loved. At this moment, his words had somehow morphed into imaginary blades that were stabbing her all over. How the hell did I even fall for this man? I really was blind back then. Once Catalina had enough fun bullying Harmony and Sarah, she took Ruben's arm and said, let's go. We shouldn't waste time here. Our time is precious today. After that, she glanced at the woman wearing a hat and signaled her to follow Harmony closely and capture her situation today. As long as she had those pictures in hand, she could later create some negative publicity about Harmony in Dansbury. After Catalina and Ruben left, Harmony turned to comfort Sarah, who had once worked for Catalina's mother's company. Sarah had opted to work freelance after being oppressed by Catalina's mother. Honestly, she had to admit that Catalina was truly her mother's daughter. Sarah, don't take their words too seriously, Harmony soothed gently. Sarah shook her head. Don't worry about me. 
Then, she looked toward the congested line of cars that wouldn't seem to budge anytime soon. A sense of unease crawled into her heart. Could Mr. Weiss also be stuck there? If so, he might not be able to make it in time. Harmony was also feeling rather worn out after standing under the chilly breeze. As a result, she started sneezing a few times. As the temperature dropped, she couldn't help but think that she might just catch a cold if she kept loafing around here doing nothing. Are you okay? Just hold on a little longer, Sarah said to her. Under the sub-zero weather, many celebrities, eager for glamorous photos during fashion week, would wear thin yet fancy dresses. Then, they would later rely on their assistants to provide them with warm clothes after the photo shoots. Sarah also felt a sense of disappointment. She worked hard to boost the popularity of her artists and tried to elevate them to better positions. Alas, in this era where fame was crucial, she had no choice but to wait in the cold as well. Sarah, let's just go. He probably can't make it, Harmony suggested to Sarah. Sarah instinctively scanned the crowd nearby as she swept her gaze through the unmoving line of cars. Judging from the terrible traffic, even A-list celebrities would have to get out of their cars and walk over. Meanwhile, the red carpet had already started. International top models and celebrities, adorned in dazzling gowns, braved the early spring chill and paraded down the red carpet. When Sarah looked toward the red carpet, two artists had seized the opportunity to sneak onto the stage for photos before security caught sight of them. Although they were promptly chased away, the artists managed to capture some red carpet shots. Harmony witnessed their endings as she held Sarah back firmly, saying, Sarah, don't make me go up there. I don't want to. In that case, Sarah had no choice but to place her hopes on Ezekiel. She looked toward the crowd instinctively and spotted a distinguished figure. He wasn't a star, but he exuded an extraordinary aura. He stood out like a sore thumb, especially with an entourage of tall bodyguards. Harmony, look, it's Mr. Weiss, Sarah exclaimed. Harmony's long hair was slightly windswept due to the cold breeze. So, she had to reach out to tidy her hair before she noticed a figure walking toward them from the crowd. Who else could it be if not Ezekiel Weiss? She looked at him in disbelief and then turned to Sarah, asking, Sarah, he didn't come here on foot, did he? Sarah nodded in response. It seems like it. For the first time, Harmony felt a sense of being valued by someone. Yet, she had only met this stranger twice. He really came, she muttered, feeling pleasantly surprised. On the other hand, Sarah exclaimed joyfully, when you walk the red carpet with Mr. Weiss later, let's give those two a good slap in the face. Although the inner square where they were waiting was crowded, Ezekiel spotted Harmony in the crowd at a glance. She wore a black down jacket and appeared inconspicuous among the fashionable crowd. Still, the gaze he cast upon her was filtered with intense affection. It didn't matter where she was, as he could spot her immediately. He was so focused that he had even managed to somehow ignore the comings and goings around him. Sarah led Harmony to meet Ezekiel and his entourage. Then, she blurted enthusiastically, I didn't expect you to show up, Mr. Weiss. I'm a man of my word. Ezekiel smirked as his gaze shifted toward Harmony. His voice carried strength and weight, leaving no room for doubt. Harmony's face, cold and pale from the freezing wind, became tinged with a hint of blush under his gaze. Mr. Weiss, I'll leave Harmony to your capable hands. Please take her to the red carpet for some photos and make an appearance, Sarah said. Sure, just leave it to me. Ezekiel nodded, adding, I've arranged for Miss Mayo to watch the Fashion Week runway show. So, we might leave later than expected. This statement caught Sarah off guard momentarily. Nonetheless, she quickly snapped back to her senses and happily replied, no problem. I'll wait for you outside. Harmony was also astonished by this sudden turn of events. How did she get the privilege to watch the runway? Just how influential was Ezekiel? Tickets for such events were not easy to come by. Miles, make the arrangements. We're leaving. Ezekiel instructed his assistant. Got it. I'll inform them of your attendance, Miles responded. Harmony and Sarah arrived at the entrance under Ezekiel's lead. Miles immediately gave them a thumbs-up gesture. Then, Sarah told Harmony, Harmony, give it your all. Now pass me your coat. 
Harmony nodded and took off her outer coat, revealing a simple yet elegant long-sleeved evening dress. An elegant scarf accentuated her gorgeous collarbone, and her beautifully shaped cleavage could be seen at certain angles. Ezekiel felt his heart pound as she took her coat off. Although he had already watched her starring in an Asian film and had taken the chance to admire her grace in traditional clothing, he realized that she was equally stunning in an evening gown. Sarah was escorted out by security. Just then, Catalina's assistant, who was instructed to stay behind, made an urgent call to Catalina. Hello, what's going on? Did you get the shot? Catalina, Harmony is about to walk the red carpet, and someone is taking her up soon, the assistant reported. What? How is that possible? Catalina, still arm in arm with Ruben, had just completed her walk on the red carpet and used all her skills to linger for three minutes. It's true. A super handsome and wealthy man is accompanying her. The assistant was exceedingly jealous. Where did Harmony find such a handsome escort? A Chu. Harmony started sneezing repeatedly the minute she took off her coat and stood in the wind for 10 seconds. Then, she looked at Ezekiel nervously. It's my first time walking the red carpet here, so I'm quite nervous. Ezekiel reached out to her. I'll hold your hand. Harmony placed her hand in his large palm. Her icy fingers surprised the man because he felt as if he was holding an ice stick. Conversely, his warm palm became Harmony's only source of warmth. She instinctively intertwined her fingers with his as he led her onto the stage. At this moment, a few artists from various parts of the world, representing different skin tones, also ascended the stage. Harmony, with her eastern charm, quickly became the focus of the journalists' cameras as they also wondered who the man beside her was. Several domestic reporters recognized Harmony and hurriedly snapped their shutters. This was a fresh development. A newly awarded actress from Dansbury suddenly appeared on such a prestigious red carpet. It would be a significant topic. They had no doubt that this would make the headlines if this piece of information reached Dansbury. Harmony could feel a sneeze coming on. Yet, she also knew all too well that she couldn't possibly sneeze in front of the journalists' flashing cameras. Otherwise, she would be utterly humiliated. Due to that, she had no choice but to bury her face in Ezekiel's chest as she sneezed. A subtle smile played on Ezekiel's lips. He knew that she was freezing. So, he reached out and took off his own suit jacket before draping it over her. When the high-quality, handmade black suit was worn on the delicate and charming figure of the girl, it instantly created a captivating and endearing scene. Harmony's beauty gained a unique touch before the camera. Plus, the man attentively attending to her also entered the frame. His otherworldly nobility and handsome face exuded an elegant prince-like aura from every angle. Catalina and Ruben, who were standing at the red carpet entrance, stared at the affectionate couple on the red carpet. Their eyes were wide open in disbelief as their brains failed to comprehend just what was going on. So, that's the person Harmony managed to seduce. Reuben gritted his teeth, recognizing Ezekiel. Catalina's breath hitched as she regarded the male specimen before her. She would also love to seduce a handsome and elegant man like him, but who exactly was he? Why had she never seen him before? If he was one of the well-known wealthy second-generation individuals in Dansbury, she should have recognized him the second she laid her eyes on him. Harmony, draped in Ezekiel's warmth-infused suit, had to grip the jacket tightly to prevent it from slipping off her shoulders. So, she couldn't hold the man's arm or hold hands with him. Ezekiel didn't mind it one whit as he decided to take the initiative. His long arm reached out and embraced her, leading her toward the end of the red carpet. Sarah was overjoyed as she watched this scene playing out before her. Finally, her artist had a chance to shine. This was a huge deal for her because she was just like Harmony. When she resigned from her job under Catalina's mother, she had fallen under the category of individuals who were looked down upon in this industry. What shocked Catalina even more was that when Harmony stood there posing for photos, the security guards didn't come up to usher her away. It was as if she could freely linger there. Who gave her that right? Who is that man? Catalina turned to Reuben. Have you seen him before? Reuben's jealous heart clenched as he watched Harmony in the man's embrace, displaying a gentle and obedient demeanor that made him uneasy. I don't know who he is, Reuben replied. 
Although he was considered handsome in the entertainment industry, he seemed to fall short in front of this man. Let's go, let's go inside. I need to know just who he is, Catalina uttered and turned away begrudgingly. The show was held inside, and Catalina managed to get a seat in the third row after pulling various strings. She wondered if Harmony would enter as well. If Harmony was going to attend the show, which row would she be in? Just as she was preoccupied with such thoughts, Ezekiel had led Harmony in. The warmth within the venue, coupled with a faint whiff of fragrant scent in the air, could easily make one relax. Harmony took off Ezekiel's suit and handed it back to him. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. He took the suit and hung it over his arm. He looked exceptionally stylish in his dark-colored shirt. You're welcome. Ezekiel smiled. When a staff member approached, he simply stated his name. The staff immediately led them to the centermost position respectfully. Harmony took a look around as she followed Ezekiel to their designated seats. When she got a good look at the people around her, she was dumbstruck. The people sitting on both sides were either international top celebrities or founders of major brands. This was not a spot for an insignificant celebrity like her. It was a gathering of industry leaders. Unfortunately, Catalina and Ruben were seated directly across from her. Naturally, they were furious when they saw Harmony's seating arrangement. Harmony was sitting in the front row and was surrounded by international top figures on both sides. How did she get such treatment? When she lifted her head, she noticed Catalina and Ruben seated directly across from her. She chose to ignore them and straightened her posture. Meanwhile, the one seated beside Ezekiel seemed to know him. In fact, they had proactively shook hands and started engaging in conversation with him. At the same time, they introduced him to those around them. Several influential figures also came over to shake hands with him. The situation looked as if Ezekiel was the influential figure in their midst. It was true. Ezekiel's status surpassed theirs. Catalina felt her heart race as she watched Ezekiel opposite her. She was eager to get to know him. There wasn't even a need to compare the man she had brought with her and the man sitting next to Harmony. The two men weren't even on the same level. Her sense of superiority vanished and was replaced by a feeling of being utterly humiliated by Harmony. When someone handed a wine glass, Ezekiel took it and handed it to Harmony. She was surprised but readily accepted it. At that moment, someone held their glass in front of him. The industry leaders were here to clink their glasses with him. They seemed to be treating Harmony as a guest of honor. Harmony felt her heart pumping furiously. As these big shots smiled and raised a toast to her, Harmony felt dumbfounded, but she pretended to be calm. She started wondering once more who this Mr. Weiss really was. Once the guests had all arrived, the runway began at 4.30 p.m. Harmony had only heard of this fashion show before. The famous and powerful of all nations took pride in being able to watch this fashion show. Anyone who could show up here would make it to the headlines back in their homeland, and it was enough material for the media to pick up for a while. After the lights were dimmed, Harmony felt a bit more at ease. She stole a glance at the man beside her. The light was shining on his face, and his profile was so perfect that it was captivating. He was regal yet aloof. Harmony was still staring, and the guy had turned his attention from the runway to her, and their eyes met. Harmony felt her heart skipping a beat, and then she put on a stiff smile. Ezekiel smiled as well, and he turned from an aloof gentleman into a warm and welcoming guy. Harmony felt her heart getting tickled by something, and butterflies fluttered in her stomach. She turned her attention back to the runway, watching the mesmerizing models. She dashed her earlier thoughts. There are a ton of pretty women in this world. I'm nothing compared to them. I was just lucky Mr. Weiss wanted to help me. All I have to feel is gratitude. Nothing else. Or else I'd be getting myself into a rut. Even though she was only 23 years old, Harmony had gone through too much, and she saw through society's true colors. She knew the unwritten rules and knew how to protect herself. For example, men like Ezekiel were good to admire from afar, but if she got too close, she would be burned. Catalina didn't even bother with the show. She was staring at Ezekiel, watching his every move and expression. She hid her love within. She'd ignored Reuben, and Reuben knew she was watching another guy, but he had no right to be jealous. Catalina could dump him anytime she wanted. 
He tried to put an arm around Catalina's shoulder, but Catalina smacked his hand away subtly, much to his annoyance. His attention was on Harmony, of course. For the first time, he thought she radiated the air of a princess. Is it because of her seat tonight? Or is it because a ton of big shots are around her, so she looks more regal? Tonight, Reuben saw Harmony in a new light, and his heart was beating with desire. More than before, for he had never gotten his hands on Harmony. Harmony covered her mouth and yawned. She still felt cold. Just when she was going to rub her nose, someone draped a suit over her. It was Ezekiel's, and it was warm. She softly said, thank you. Don't catch a cold, answered Ezekiel gently. Yeah, Harmony smiled. Her makeup looked lively that night, and she looked like a blooming flower in summer when she smiled. Something stirred within Ezekiel when she smiled. Her looks are my cup of tea. Especially her twinkling eyes. Her eyes were clear and innocent when she wasn't smiling, but whenever she smiled, they would look like moons, captivating and attractive. Her lips were like luscious petals of flowers, attracting the sight of those who saw them. Ezekiel was still reliving the kisses last time. He wanted more. Any plans for tonight? Ezekiel asked, huddling closer. It was a sign he wanted to ask her out. Harmony knew that. She blinked and said honestly, no. Can you come to a ball with me, then? Asked. Ezekiel. What ball? Asked Harmony curiously. Ezekiel pointed at the runway. The ball for this fashion show. I know you'll love it. Harmony's eyes went wide. What? He wants me to go to the ball for this show. That ball has even more stringent rules than the show. Only the cream of the crop can get in. Not even people like Catalina can get that chance. Harmony felt a little nervous, but she nodded. Okay, I'll do it. Ezekiel winked, his eyes filled with delight. Catalina watched in envy, and she almost clenched her fists. She saw how Ezekiel started the conversation with Harmony, and they were huddled close, whispering. She didn't like how close they were standing together. She thought Harmony would try to please Ezekiel, but she did no such thing. All she did was sit there like a serious student. Reuben didn't bother with the show either. He too was having the same feelings as Catalina. He cursed himself for not being born strong enough, or he would take Harmony back. The hour was up, and time struck 5.30 p.m. When the lights came back on, everyone snapped out of the dreamy show and landed in reality. Most people wanted to see more, like Harmony. She would love to watch the show even if it went on for two more hours. This was a masterpiece. Want to have dinner together? Ezekiel asked, standing up. Sarah was still outside, so Harmony declined, sorry, I can't. I have to see my manager. Ezekiel wasn't angry his offer was declined. He admired her bravery in saying no. After all, no woman would say no to him if he asked them out for dinner. Harmony took the suit off and handed it back to Ezekiel. Here's your suit, Mr. Weiss. I'll go out now. It's cold outside. You wear this. Ezekiel was in no hurry to take it back. Harmony was concerned. No, I'm fine. You're not wearing a lot either, so you watch out for the flu. Ezekiel worked out a lot, and his body was chiseled. He draped the suit over Harmony's shoulders. You can give this back to me after you see your manager. Now let's go. Ezekiel walked with her and came out of the runway's venue. A ton of reporters surrounded them. Harmony and Ezekiel looked perfect together. The reporters back in their home nation quickly took photos. Catalina and Reuben came out, stiff smiles on their faces. Even the order of who came out of this door had unwritten rules written all over it. The people who came out first were higher in the hierarchy of power. Sarah had been buffeted by the icy winds out there for an hour, but she was happy to do so. When she saw Ezekiel and Harmony coming out together, she grinned and walked up to them. Thank you very much, Mr. Weiss. It's all thanks to you that Harmony gets to join this show. Harmony took the suit off and handed it back to Ezekiel. Here, wear this. It's windy out here. Sarah quickly draped a down jacket around Harmony's shoulders. Once Harmony wore the jacket, Ezekiel wore his suit. He looked at the assistant and bodyguard standing nearby, and he told Harmony, give me your phone. Harmony was surprised, but she unlocked her phone and gave it to him anyway. Ezekiel called his number. Once the call went through, he handed the phone back to Harmony. 
See you tonight. See you tonight. Harmony waved at Ezekiel. Ezekiel nodded at Sarah before he left. Sarah felt her soul getting captivated. Surprised, she said, my, he's handsome and polite. Rich people are really well-mannered. Harmony saw Ezekiel off. He was still outstanding, even among the crowd. Sarah snapped out of it. Oh, you guys said, see you tonight. Are you guys going somewhere? He asked me to join the fashion show's ball, said Harmony. Sarah clapped her hand to her mouth just to stop herself from screaming. What? The ball? You get to go? My goodness, who is that man, really? Sarah felt envious of the girl. She is so lucky. They didn't notice Catalina coming closer, and she heard what Sarah said. Angrily, she went up to them. You think you're good enough to join the ball, Harmony? Harmony turned around, frowning. Intending to annoy Catalina, she said, yeah, I am. So what? Sarah wanted to get back at her for the humiliation she suffered, and she snorted. What? Just because you can't go doesn't mean Harmony can't. She just proved it. Catalina choked on herself. Her face went red, but she held back her fury and asked, who was that guy? Why should I tell you? Harmony scoffed. Even if you don't tell me, I'll find out who he is eventually. What did you do to hook up with a guy like that, Harmony? Catalina asked, her eyes filled with disdain. Sarah snapped, Mr. Weiss admires her. Don't slander her name. Reuben sneered. He admires her. Back at the hotel, she slept with him like a nympho. What part of her does he admire? Her skills in bed. Harmony's face went red. She couldn't believe Reuben would mock her like that. They had a past together. Now she knew there was no need to explain the thing that happened back at the hotel. You guys slept together? Catalina asked, jealousy flowing from her eyes. Harmony's a grown woman. As long as she doesn't break the law, she can do whatever she wants for her love life. It's none of your business, Sarah retorted. Harmony held Sarah's arm. Let's go, Sarah. Catalina saw them off furiously. She turned to Reuben. They actually got it on. They were kissing like horn dogs back at the hotel's entrance. I bet they did, said Reuben. Catalina stomped her foot. What part of her is so good? Why'd he fall for her? Reuben knew Catalina was being jealous. She would love to take Harmony's place if she could. Annoyed, he said, what's so good about that guy? Harmony and Sarah got out of the throng and took a break at a nearby coffee shop. Once they took their seats, Sarah asked, are you hiding something from me, Harmony? Did you and Mr. Weiss really? Harmony's cheeks burned. She quickly denied, no, we did nothing. Well, it was just a kiss. You guys kissed. Sarah was surprised. It was back at the hotel. I wanted to get Reuben mad, so when Ezekiel opened his door, I kissed him, said Harmony shyly, holding her head. Oh, I see. So, Ezekiel does have feelings for Harmony. She kissed him, that's why. And, did he get mad? Sarah wanted details. Harmony shook her head. He didn't get mad. He even even kissed me back. Harmony's cheeks burned up more. Whoa, that's spicy. No wonder he's so nice to you, said Sarah, a little envious. Sarah, he might be nice to me, but don't get any ideas. Nothing more will happen, said Harmony, oh, someone's calm for once. You aren't even crushing for a guy like Mr. Weiss, Sarah teased. I just know my place. Harmony rested her chin on her hand. Sarah stopped teasing. She whipped out her phone and searched for local news. She then handed the phone to Harmony. You got on the headlines. Harmony took the phone and had a look. Her mind buzzed. That's fast. Award-winning actress on the red carpet with mysterious magnate. A loving couple, said Sarah. That was the headline. Harmony's cheeks started to burn. These people make up clickbaits all the time. You've made ripples in the industry back home. And you just established your position more because of this trip. Since Harmony was in this industry, she knew that if someone wanted to be famous, they had to have acting skills, exposure, and status. She got a lot of offers from a lot of rich guys to help her out, but she didn't take any of them. That was why, even though she had the looks and skills, she was still a C-lister. If it wasn't because of her last film becoming a phenomenon, she would never have gotten that award. 
Sarah, just focus on the movies, make more money, and have a nice retirement, said Harmony. Sarah nodded, touched. Sure. She scrolled through her phone and saw another piece of news released by a media outlet. Shocking news. Award-winning actress attending runway wearing last season's dress. A disgrace. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. She was mad, but she didn't want Harmony to see that and ruin her mood. She checked Harmony's dress. It was beautiful, but the fashion industry was just that stringent. Last season was last season. Anyone who wore last season's items would be discriminated against. If Harmony could wear the latest dress, she would be able to prove these trolls wrong. Sarah had added Ezekiel's number to her contacts. Now, she wanted to ask the guy for a favor and see if he could lend Harmony a new dress. It should be easy enough for him. She forwarded the news to Ezekiel and texted, Could you do me a favor, Mr. Weiss? Do you have any way to get the latest dress? The media back home is mocking Harmony en masse. Ezekiel was on his way back to the hotel. He picked up his phone to check the message when he heard the notification ring. He frowned. He was a little miffed that the entertainment section was mocking Harmony over the dress she wore. Ezekiel texted, leave it to me. A simple answer, but one filled with power. Sarah was delighted to see that reply. I expected nothing less from a guy like him. The media back home is going to be proven sorely wrong. Sarah didn't tell Harmony about it. The girl wasn't exactly a bold person. She wouldn't take advantage of this connection, but Sarah had to do it to prove those trolls back home wrong. Fortunately, Ezekiel said yes. Sarah took Harmony to a nearby restaurant for dinner. Harmony was starving. She took the menu, her eyes shining. Sarah took the menu away from her. You're going to a ball tonight. Watch your portions. But I can't even smile if I don't eat. Harmony's face scrunched up. You're not going to even get half full, you hear me. Sarah ordered a diet meal for Harmony. The portion was pathetic. Harmony heaved a sigh and did as she was told. But there should be food at the ball, right? Harmony's phone rang. She picked it up and nervously said, it's Ezekiel. Why is he calling so soon? Just take the call, urged Sarah. Harmony smiled and picked it up. Hi, Mr. Weiss. Give me your location. I'll pick you up, said Ezekiel, his voice jazzy. Now, Harmony wanted to say it was just 6.10 p.m., and it was too early. However, Sarah shot her a look that said, don't ask questions. Now, said Ezekiel. Harmony smiled. I'll send you the address. She only hung up once Ezekiel said all right. She clutched her chest. Her heart was thumping furiously. Harmony, we need his help. No matter where he takes you tonight or what he wants you to do, just listen to him. If he takes you to a fashion store, you go with him, said Sarah. Harmony blinked. Why would he take me to a fashion store, Sarah? Just a hunch. It'll be an extravagant ball tonight, said Sarah nervously. Harmony sent Ezekiel her address and furtively clutched her chest. Her heart was still pounding. Back in the hotel, Catalina hid on the balcony and made some calls. In the end, she put on a smug smile. She just found herself a connection and got herself a ticket to the ball. She would attend it and see how Harmony would embarrass herself. Wearing an out-of-season dress to that event is just begging to be laughed at. The trolls picked up their slack, too, and found out where Harmony got that dress. They humiliated her in the media. Catalina would just need to make a video out of Harmony's embarrassing performance at the ball and use the trolls to attack her, and Harmony's popularity would fall. Catalina went back to the lounge and told Ruben, you stay here tonight, Ruben. I need to go out for some business. Where are you going? Ruben looked at her. Catalina mused over it and answered honestly, I got myself a ticket into the ball, but I can't take you with me. Ruben was disappointed. To entertainers, it would be an honor to be able to join the ball. He smiled, got up, approached Catalina, and put an arm around her waist. I understand. Go. Happy, Catalina patted Ruben's cheek. You're signed to my company, Ruben. I'll make sure you get famous. Ruben had no choice. Since he had decided to rely on this woman for fame and success, then he must suppress his true self and be nothing but a lapdog for her and please her. Subsequently, Catalina picked up her bag and left. Only then did Ruben's face fall. 
He slammed his pillow onto the ground. I feel like I'm nothing but a lapdog for her. Look at Harmony. The rich guy she hooks up with spoils her like a child. Catalina was going to get the latest dress so she could one-up Harmony later that night. And she had another goal. She would try to get to know Harmony's new sponsor. She knew she was a great woman, too, so if Harmony could hook up with that guy, she could too. If she could hook up with Harmony's new guy, then Harmony would be kicked out of the game. Ezekiel's car stopped before the entrance of a fancy restaurant. Harmony and Sarah were already waiting outside. They were met with a motorcade, and Sarah sighed. He's not your ordinary rich guy. One of the bodyguards opened the door and told Harmony, Please come in, Miss Mayo. Harmony turned back and waved at Sarah. She then walked to the car, and the silhouette in the passenger seat made her heart race. Mr. Weiss, she said before getting into the car. We'll need to make a pit stop, said Ezekiel. Where are we going? asked Harmony, surprised. A boutique. I picked a dress just for you, said Ezekiel. Harmony was surprised. Hey, that's a bit like what Sarah said. He's taking me to a boutique. Sure. Thanks, Mr. Weiss, said Harmony gratefully. The boutique had the latest dresses and a lot of separate products, too. They were unique and created by top fashion designers. Most people didn't even have the money to rent it. Ezekiel took Harmony into the store and looked at the shopkeeper. Pick the most suitable gown for her. He didn't name his budget, but one look from him, and the shopkeeper knew this man didn't care about price. She happily led Harmony to the second floor. The shopkeeper looked at Harmony and easily knew what kind of dress would suit her most. She came to a cabinet that housed a rare item. A luxurious white dress sat within it, and the diamonds and gemstones embedded in the dress made it look like a starry night sky. This was a luxury fashion product. Nonetheless, the dress wasn't made with a bold outlook in mind. Therefore, an eastern lady like Harmony was a perfect fit for this dress. We can try this out, miss. See if you like it. Harmony's eyes went wide in amazement. This dress was dreamy and regal. Can I really try this out? Asked Harmony. Of course. You can try out all the dresses here tonight. The shopkeeper smiled. Harmony nodded. She would go with this one. She trusted the shopkeeper's eye for fashion. Once Harmony tried out the dress, the shopkeeper herself was shocked by the result. She had seen countless runway models trying out dresses here before making their purchases. Yet, Harmony possessed a different type of beauty than experienced models. She exuded a certain kind of elegance. Thus, she was the perfect fit to show off this dress. It's gorgeous. Harmony held her breath, enjoying the look. The fabric was great, the colors were dreamy. Frankly, it felt as if her dreams of becoming a princess had come alive after wearing this dress. This dress was perfectly elegant. This is one of the rare items available in the store. It's worth buying, said the shopkeeper. Harmony nodded. Okay, I'll take this one then. The shopkeeper liked her, especially because of her gentle demeanor. She'd seen too many pushy customers. Hence, Harmony was a breath of fresh air. The shopkeeper's attitude remained friendly the entire time. Harmony had long, lustrous hair. The shopkeeper initially wanted to use some hair oil, but she thought Harmony's hair was perfect as it was. It shouldn't be ruined by some unnecessary hair products, if possible. The shopkeeper permed her hair and tied a little bun. She then clipped it with a diamond hair clip, making her hair look fluffy. The shopkeeper styled her up from head to toe. Even the shoes were the latest design of the season. Have a fun night, lady. You may see your boyfriend now. Harmony went red. She wanted to explain but thought there was no need for that. Instead, she smiled lightly and went back to the stairway. She placed her hand on the ivory handrail as she carefully went downstairs. A waitress was refilling Ezekiel's glass with water. She raised her head and was momentarily stunned by the sight before her. Then, she praised sincerely, you have a gorgeous girlfriend, sir. Ezekiel was taken aback by the comment. Nevertheless, when he turned back to see Harmony, he realized what was happening. Is that a princess walking this way? She's wonderful. Ezekiel smiled. He didn't bother explaining his relationship with Harmony. Rather, he pretended she truly was his girlfriend. Ezekiel stood up and looked at Harmony with admiration in his eyes. When Harmony noticed Ezekiel staring at her, she got a little stiff. 
As a result, she tripped on the last step and staggered ahead. Careful, said Ezekiel. He hastily approached Harmony and held her up. Harmony raised her head and apologized, I'm sorry. She didn't mean to inconvenience anyone. In Ezekiel's eyes, she looked even more phenomenal up close. She looked just like a real-life elf. He felt his heart flutter as she stood beside him. It was his first time feeling something for a woman. This dress fits you perfectly. It's beautiful, he said earnestly. Harmony curled her lips into a delighted grin, and so did Ezekiel. She might be magical. How else could she manage to make me so happy with just a smile? Let's go. Ezekiel extended his hand. Hold my arm so you won't fall again. Harmony smiled sheepishly. However, she obediently held his arm and went to the entrance. They then got into the car and went to the ballroom. The ball was held on the top floor of a hotel. This place was where the big shots of the entertainment and fashion industry had chosen to gather this night. There was a lot of blue blood here, too. This was a place for everyone to flaunt their power and status. Catalina got in after hooking up with a director. He was a man in his fifties and embroiled in a lot of scandals. Catalina had to go through several hoops just to get the ticket. She went around alone after entering the venue, searching for Harmony. Alas, the blasted woman was nowhere to be found. She can't have lost her right to come, can she? All the guests are almost here. She's just a nobody. There's no way she'd dare to come here late, right? Just then, the door that was closed for a few minutes opened up once more. A pair of guests stood under the limelight. They were none other than Harmony and Ezekiel. Catalina's eyes went wide as she stared at Harmony in disbelief. Is that still Harmony? She looked a lot more regal than before, and the man she came in with was the dream of many women. An angry Catalina held her glass tighter. She came, and she changed into something more expensive. The director asked, who is she, Ms. Martin? Is she famous back in your country? She's just a C-lister. Nothing more, snapped Catalina. Harmony was holding Ezekiel's arm. The organizer welcomed them passionately. Harmony was a little nervous since this was her first time dealing with something like this. Fortunately, Ezekiel could deal with these people in her stead. All she had to do was smile, shake hands, and say hi. Catalina stared at Ezekiel like a she-wolf stalking her prey. She'd forgotten about hating Harmony. All she wanted to do was hook up with Ezekiel. So, she asked the director, who's the gentleman? He seems desired. The director had no idea who Ezekiel really was because he was out of his league. However, he knew Ezekiel was friends with the top wealthy people. He's a powerful man. They say he's friends with the richest men and royalty all over the world, said the director. The shocked Catalina's glass almost slipped out of her hand. She covered her mouth in disbelief. He's that powerful. How did a nobody like Harmony run into a guy like him? It seems like I've underestimated her. This just means I have to seize my chance and take him for myself. It will all be worth it, even if I have to invest some money in him. After Harmony parted with Ezekiel to get some juice, Catalina stepped in. Well, someone's in the limelight today. Harmony frowned. She didn't expect Catalina to be here. Regardless, she had no intention of entertaining Catalina. So, Harmony took the juice and tried to leave. Catalina mocked, I've never seen this dress before. Where'd you get it? Some cheap, fifth-rate sweatshop. Harmony retorted, I don't blame you for your ignorance. There is no way you can understand the true value of this dress. Catalina bit her lip. She realized Harmony hadn't returned to Ezekiel's side, and Ezekiel was chatting with some guests. After he was done talking, Catalina thought she would have a chance to say hi. Or she could create a little chance encounter. Let's do this. Catalina approached Ezekiel. She was waiting for him to turn around. Once that happened, she would get in his way so he would bump into her. When he apologized, she could show him how magnanimous she was by forgiving him. Meanwhile, Harmony was coming back with a glass of juice in hand. She raised her head and saw just where Catalina was standing. Still, she immediately saw through Catalina's plan as she smirked in amusement. Oh, you're not going to set Ezekiel up. Harmony approached Ezekiel. When she passed by Catalina, she deliberately tilted her head in Catalina's direction as she placed her hand on Ezekiel's arm. 
Ezekiel smiled when Harmony returned to his side. He stopped talking to the guest, and Harmony said, I want to see the scenery there. Sure, said Ezekiel. Catalina's plan failed, and her face contorted in rage. She glared at Harmony with hatred. We'll make her suffer tonight. They could see the whole city shrouded in the blanket of night as they stood on the balcony. Harmony took out her phone and tried to take a selfie. After all, she was a celebrity. So, it was kind of within her job description to show off her beauty to her fans. Suddenly, she was seized by a bout of desire as she asked, Mr. Weiss, can we take a wee fi? I might not get to see him again. If that's the case, I'll take a picture of him to commemorate this night. Ezekiel nodded. Of course. Harmony turned on the front camera and scooted closer to Ezekiel. Ezekiel asked, want me to hold the phone? I'm taller. Harmony agreed. If she had taken the photo, her face would have looked big due to the angle. Sure. Harmony smiled and gave him the phone. Then, she pressed a button so the phone would take the photo after six seconds. Ezekiel held the phone up. From his angle, the photo was taken at a suitable distance. Harmony leaned on his chest and smiled. The smile was captured on camera. Ezekiel looked at the photo and said, send me a copy of the photo. Harmony was surprised. He wants our we fi She nodded agreeably. Sure, I'll give you a copy later. A middle-aged man came up to Ezekiel. Can we talk, Mr. Weiss? There was anticipation in his eyes. Harmony pushed him. Go, I'll stay here and wait. I need to catch a break. Ezekiel nodded. Don't run around. Wait for me. And he left. Harmony couldn't help but feel as though she had eaten something sweet after hearing those words. It feels like I'm a kid who needs someone to tend to. It feels great. Warm and fuzzy. Once Ezekiel was gone, Harmony checked the photo. It was a nice one. Alas, when she took a closer look, her face went beet red. Why'd I lean on his chest? And his arms on the balustrade behind us. It makes it look like he's holding me. The photo made them look like a couple. Harmony's face went apple red as her heart started to race. She took a few pictures of the night scene. Catalina came bearing a glass of red wine. Harmony was the only one she knew here. She tried to say hi to the top celebrities and business owners, but they ignored her after giving her a cursory yet polite glance. Everyone came here to know people better than them, not those who were worse off. Any no-name characters would be sidelined here. You used to love Reuben, so what are you doing now? Having a change of heart so fast. Harmony tucked her phone away and looked at Catalina. Mr. Weiss is a hundred times better than Reuben. I'm not blind. If there's a better guy out there, why would I stay loyal to a jerk? You're already dating Mr. Weiss. Catalina was obviously getting jealous. Harmony smiled. My private affairs are none of your business. Catalina choked on herself, utterly infuriated. She harumped as she said snidely, look in the mirror. You're not a good match for him. And that's still not your business, Harmony retorted, turning back. People who try to grasp the moon will inevitably fall hard, said Catalina. Chapter 2681 Harmony ignored Catalina and left without so much as a glance. Catalina seethed with resentment. Harmony's lack of response told her that she and Ezekiel would never be a thing. Harmony never thought she would become an item with Ezekiel. She knew where she stood. So, she wouldn't ask for more. All she wanted was to grasp this short-lived happiness. When Ezekiel made it back to the balcony, he didn't see Harmony anywhere. Meanwhile, Catalina had stayed behind. Her eyes shone with greed as she quickly said, Mr. Weiss, hi, I'm Harmony's friend. Are you looking for her? She's gone to the bathroom. Why don't you wait for her here? You're Miss Mayo's friend. Ezekiel narrowed his eyes. Yep. We're both celebs, and we worked together before. It's great she met you. She just broke up with her boyfriend, and I was worried she might not get over him. Catalina sighed, hinting to Ezekiel that Harmony used to be in a relationship. I bet people like Ezekiel prefer innocent girls. I know she just broke up, said Ezekiel. He obviously didn't mind. Catalina was shocked. Does he know her well? Oh, I see. I thought you didn't know. She's a nice girl, but she has too many suitors, slandered Catalina. Is that so? Ezekiel took a sip of his red wine. 
he was not surprised. There was something likable about Harmony. He couldn't deny that he was attracted to her as well. You don't mind? Catalina asked curiously. Ezekiel shook his head. I don't. So, you're going to court her? Catalina asked again. He wanted to know all about Ezekiel's thoughts on Harmony and find out how far they would go. Ezekiel hadn't thought that far. Courtship. Harmony returned to the hall. She did go to the bathroom earlier. When she searched for Ezekiel, she saw him standing with Catalina. Her heart sank at the sight as she felt something inexplicable filling her soul. Nonetheless, she realized it was jealousy after musing it over. When Ezekiel saw her, he went over to her. Harmony squashed that ugly emotion into a little ball as she smiled at him. Done with your chat? Yes, I met your friend, said Ezekiel. Harmony was stunned, Catalina called herself my friend. And she talked to Ezekiel. Nothing good, I bet. What did she tell you? Harmony asked, smiling curiously. She said you just broke up with your boyfriend and need someone by your side, answered Ezekiel. He beamed. Ah, she also told me you have a lot of suitors. Is that true? Harmony knew what Catalina told Ezekiel after hearing his words. There's no doubt she told him about the breakup. I can bet every dollar I own that she also said I have a lot of suitors just to make me look like a girl who goes around sleeping with a ton of guys. Ezekiel didn't fall for it, though. It's cute. How lovely of her, but she's not my friend. She's the one who stole my ex, said Harmony, nipping Catalina's scheme in the bud. Ezekiel was shocked. Is that so? He turned to Catalina again, his gaze colder and sharper. Catalina almost choked on her wine as she sensed his gaze on her. What did she tell him to make him look at me in disgust? Stay away from her. If she tries to hurt you, tell me. I'll make her pay. Ezekiel looked at Harmony. He sounded like he'd taken up the role of her guardian angel. Harmony beamed. Nice assist, Catalina. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Harmony asked, do they serve a buffet here? I'm hungry. They do. Right here. Ezekiel smiled and held Harmony's hand. Then, he promptly led her to the hall, where a buffet was served. Harmony wasn't the kind of person who wouldn't communicate after an obvious, misunderstanding had happened. She would talk if she had to in order to nip those things in the bud. Ezekiel took her to the buffet hall. It was classy and resplendent, and Harmony's eyes shone with anticipation. This buffet is going to cost at least a few hundred dollars anywhere else. All real and expensive food here. I gotta enjoy them. Can't waste this chance. Harmony took a plate. Ezekiel followed her. Unfortunately, she couldn't let loose and take everything she wanted due to her occupation. Still, she did her best and took whatever she wanted to eat. Harmony took a seat beside the floor-to-ceiling window. She enjoyed the view as she ate. Ah, happiness. She wasn't someone who required expensive designer bags to be happy. All she needed was a nice meal. It's a good thing Sarah stopped me from eating at the restaurant. I can eat more here. Ezekiel looked at her. He saw how her eyes shone at the sight of good food. She felt real and down to earth. She wasn't putting on a pretense like all those women he had met in his life. Harmony raised her head. When she noticed how little food Ezekiel had taken, she went red. You don't eat a lot, do you, Mr. Weiss? Ezekiel explained, I had dinner before I came. Harmony nodded. She kept eating while Ezekiel leaned languidly on the back of his chair. He would pop a piece of his food into his mouth from time to time as he watched Harmony. Every time Harmony had a taste of something she never had before, her eyes would glimmer with joy. Ezekiel saw everything. It felt like he was seeing an innocent girl tasting good stuff. After the enjoyable meal, Harmony sang her praises, it was worth it coming here. Ezekiel chuckled in amusement. Harmony looked at him, a little awkward. Sorry, that was embarrassing. No, I quite like your real self. It's cute. Ezekiel looked at Harmony, smiling. I like being in the company of people who are true to themselves. Harmony bit her lip. Can I take some more food, then? Go, take anything you want. Ezekiel didn't mind. All that mattered was that Harmony was enjoying her time here. Harmony took her plate and grabbed more food and dessert. All of them were small in portions. She gave him a plate of the food she took. You want some? Ezekiel picked it up. 
all have a taste. Harmony's lips curled into a small smile as she looked at Ezekiel. Ezekiel thought her smile was like honey on a cake. Sweet. After a beat, he inquired curiously, so when are you flying home? If nothing else happens, I'll be boarding a flight home tomorrow, said Harmony. That's soon. Yeah, I'll have to hash the script out and start the shooting. Plus, I have some events to attend, said Harmony. Now that she finally had some popularity, she had to work to pay off the mortgage for her and Sarah's house. Your Chinese isn't bad. Ever consider taking up roles in foreign films? Asked Ezekiel. Harmony's eyes went wide as she blinked at him dumbly. Then, she put on a smile of resignation. I don't have any connections or resources that can get me a role. I am your connection and resource, said Ezekiel. Harmony smiled wryly. I've troubled you enough. I can't ask you to give me any more resources. Besides, I don't have anything to repay you with. I'm serious, Miss Mayo. I want to help you stand on the international stage. Say the word, and I'll do it, said Ezekiel solemnly. His company was progressing fine. So, he could afford to spend some time supporting a soon-to-be world-famous star. Harmony's mind was blown. She could feel that Ezekiel wasn't lying. Are you serious, Mr. Weiss? Harmony couldn't believe it. Will he help me unconditionally? Yes. Ezekiel nodded. Harmony pursed her lips. Her mind was filled with white noise as she tried to make sense of what was going on. Then, she asked quietly, how should I repay you? Do you want me to date you or something? Harmony was red when she was done talking. She knew about this industry's unwritten rule. If a man wanted to help her, then she had to sleep with him in return. There were no free lunches in this world. Ezekiel narrowed his eyes. You don't have to date me, he muttered. Harmony felt her blood grow cold. So, I'm not worthy. I knew my looks weren't enough for him. So, you want me to sleep with another guy? She asked. Her value was in her youth, after all. He paused for a moment, then he smiled. No, I just want to help you, that's all. She blinked. So, there's actually a free meal in this world. I'd like to have better resources and a good platform. If you'll help me, I'll do my best to act and make money for you. You won't make a loss. Harmony had made her choice she accepted his help. Ezekiel smiled. Good. Then you're not going back so soon. I'll get someone to talk about the script with you. I'll give you the best resources there are. Harmony was shivering in excitement. She looked at Ezekiel, wondering how she should repay him. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. I don't know how to repay you, Harmony said excitedly. Ezekiel held her hand, and he assured her. Don't think about that for now. Just focus on your career. She was in luck. The man was now her sponsor, and he wanted to make her a world-famous star. The man didn't have any ulterior motives for doing this. He just liked her and wanted to make her famous. He had a lot of connections he could use, and he was a rich guy. After that, Ezekiel took Harmony around to get to know all the directors. The directors made sure they remembered this beautiful Eastern woman. Catalina watched everything, stewing and simmering inside. She watched how Ezekiel introduced Harmony to his connections and wished she was in Harmony's place. The clock struck 9 p.m. A lot of guests took an early leave. Ezekiel checked the time and decided to leave as well. He took Harmony with him. It's late. I'll take you to the hotel. Sure. Harmony nodded. She had her horizons expanded and had the honor of knowing all the top directors in the industry. To celebrities, it was an honor to meet the industry's top dogs. Catalina took an early leave. She couldn't take it anymore, or she would explode with jealousy. All the directors she couldn't even get to greet actually smiled and shook Harmony's hand. She couldn't take that. Harmony got into the car. She wanted to get to the boutique to get her clothes back and give the jewelry back to the shopkeeper. The boutique was still open when she arrived. Harmony went inside to change her clothes and get her stuff. The shopkeeper walked her to the entrance and saw her off. Ezekiel's motorcade took Harmony back to her hotel. The whole night, Harmony thought she was having a dream. She had the most extravagant night of her life. The neon lights around were radiating romance. And then, after a long dry season, snow started to fall. It's snowing, Harmony mentioned, surprised. Ezekiel looked outside the window. He was in a good mood, and he turned to Harmony. 
Do you know how to ski? No, but I'd like to try. Harmony smiled. She was so caught up in work that she had no time to try new stuff. I'll take you to a skiing session if I get the chance. Really, she was excited. She felt like she just hit the jackpot. Ezekiel was too nice to her. Yeah, tell your manager to cancel all the plans back home. Stay here for a week. I promise I'll convince her to sign you up for a movie, he stated. Thank you, Harmony said gratefully. Back at the ball, Ezekiel asked if she wanted to change her manager, but Harmony refused. She and Sarah had come a long way. If it weren't for Sarah, she wouldn't be here today. So, even though she had gotten Ezekiel's support, she didn't want to leave Sarah behind. Ezekiel respected her decision on that part. They then reached the hotel. Harmony got out of the car and went around. She stopped in front of the side where Ezekiel was sitting. He rolled down the window, the lights shining on his beautiful face. Harmony was lost in his eyes for a few moments. She then smiled and waved him goodbye. See you. You'd best go back now, Ezekiel commented. Harmony smiled and went into the hotel. Ezekiel's car had just gone ten yards, but then he said to his bodyguard, stop the car. He looked at a group of guys passing by. They were talking loudly and crudely. Obviously, they were in this hotel as well. Ezekiel narrowed his eyes. He realized having Harmony stay here was not a safe thing to do, and this hotel's facilities were mediocre. It was clear this place was a safety hazard. What's wrong, sir? Turn back and give me a moment, Ezekiel ordered. The bodyguard drove back to the hotel. Ezekiel then got out of the car and went to the elevator. Harmony had just gotten to her room. Sarah was welcoming her. Had a great night. You bet. Do you have any idea how many top directors I met? It was an eye-opening experience. Harmony couldn't wait to share her experience with Sarah. At that moment, someone rang the doorbell. Surprised, Sarah said, I'll take the door. She looked through the peephole and was even more surprised to see who it was. Mr. Weiss. Why did he come here? She opened the door. Mr. Weiss. Come in. Harmony was stunned as well. She got up and looked at Ezekiel. What brings you here? Pack up. I'll get you rooms at a new hotel. This isn't a safe place, Ezekiel announced curtly. Sarah was surprised. She then heard a group of men messing around in the corridor, and they sounded raunchy. Ezekiel didn't expect those guys to be on the same floor as the ladies. Now, he wanted to switch hotels for them even more. Sarah made up her mind quickly, and she said, Harmony, pack up and check out. Too many guys are here tonight. It's not safe. Harmony looked at Ezekiel gratefully. So, he came back up because there are too many guys around here. Sure, Harmony took out her suitcase and packed it up with Sarah while Ezekiel waited outside for them. The packing didn't take too long. The ladies were done a moment later. Sarah checked all corners of the room, making sure that they didn't leave anything behind. She told Harmony, let's go, Harmony. I'll check out. Harmony's luggage was big because she had a lot of stuff. The moment she came to the entrance, Ezekiel extended his hand. I'll do it. It's fine. It's not heavy. I can. Harmony didn't want to trouble him. Ezekiel was already holding the handle, insisting on helping. As such, Harmony had no choice but to let go. Sarah pushed the elevator button and waited for the two of them. They came to the lobby, and Sarah checked out of their rooms. A bodyguard came in to take the luggage. The ladies went into Ezekiel's car, and the motorcade went to the city center. They came to the seven-star hotel Ezekiel was staying in. The lobby was resplendent. Sarah and Harmony then checked in it was a presidential suite. Ezekiel booked a 10-day stay for them. The cost alone shocked Sarah. It cost more than 150000 What did Harmony do to make Mr. Weiss so happy? He's so generous. It's late. You ladies should get some rest. Ezekiel left after he got them the keys. Thank you, Mr. Weiss, Sarah said quickly. Harmony then saw Ezekiel off. She wasn't just feeling gratitude now. Ezekiel was like a god to her. She worshipped and loved him. The staff then led them to their rooms. A seven-star hotel service made the guests feel at home. Once in the room, Sarah turned around and hugged Harmony. This is all thanks to you, Harmony. I can't believe I get to stay in a hotel like this. This is great. 
Harmony was a little dumbfounded, too, but she knew that Sarah wasn't happy just because they got to stay in this lovely hotel. Or at least she would have another reason real soon. Sarah, I have something to tell you, but you must stay calm, all right? Sarah sat Harmony down on the couch. That alone makes me excited, you know that. So, what's the good news? Ezekiel wants me to enter the international movie market, Harmony announced honestly. International market of, Sarah was stunned. Her eyes went wide. Is that true? He's really doing that for you. Harmony nodded. I'm sure. He introduced me to a ton of top directors tonight. I didn't believe it at first, but he didn't seem like he was lying. Sarah was so excited she could cry. She held Harmony's hand. You finally got your big break. You can show all the trolls that your future is brighter than anyone else. I'm so happy for you. Sarah was a broad-minded person. She knew she wasn't good enough to bring Harmony to great success, so she let Harmony do what she had to do. Harmony held Sarah's hand. What are you talking about, Sarah? You should be happy for both of us. No matter what kind of movie I'm getting in, you'll still be my manager. Sarah was shocked upon hearing that. Harmony smiled sweetly and asked, Don't you want to clear your mortgage sooner? Sarah hugged her, shedding tears of joy. Of course I want to, girl. Thank you, Harmony. Thanks for not abandoning me. Harmony was imagining their nice lives after this. Everyone wanted a nice life. Being in this industry taught her that hard work was the only path to a good life. Once she was presented with an opportunity, she would have to work hard. The ladies couldn't sleep that night. They were on the couch, talking about the future. Harmony couldn't even get a wink of sleep. She knew that her upcoming challenges would be big. Getting into the international market was something she had never dared to imagine. As for Catalina, she couldn't sleep either. She got up and scrolled through her phone, and she saw the news outlets back home showing the dress Harmony had worn earlier. It proved everyone wrong about how they laughed at Harmony for wearing last season stuff. Damn it. Catalina gritted her teeth. What's wrong? Ruben was woken up by the noise. He hugged Catalina from behind, but she pushed him away in disgust. She crossed her arms. Why can you even sleep? Do you know that Harmony is going to enter the international movie market? She's going to rise further in the industry. Ruben woke up right away, shock coursing through him. How did Harmony please that guy so much that he would make her an international movie star? I didn't know she was this good. Ruben was confused. When we were dating, she was dumb, stubborn, and obstinate. Even though she's hot, I lost interest in her. Why does that wise guy think so highly of her? Did she seduce him or something? She's not just good. She was like a succubus. Catalina cursed. At that, Ruben mocked, don't worry. She's not even good enough to get into that market. If she doesn't have true skills, she's going to come crawling back. Catalina turned around and looked at him. Are you sure? Of course I am. I dated her for five years. She can't make a name for herself, Ruben commented confidently. That soothed Catalina a little, and she smiled. All right, then, I'll wait for the day she gets kicked back. Back in the presidential suite, Sarah was saying something similar to Harmony. Harmony, once we get onto the international stage, we must make a name for ourselves, or you'll find it hard to make it even back in our home country. Harmony nodded. Sure, I'll work hard. I'll do anything. Meanwhile, Ezekiel was in his room, still awake. At least ten scripts were handed over to him, and all of the characters needed had suited Harmony. He patiently and earnestly went through the scripts. He wanted to give Harmony a good start, and it couldn't be something that challenged her too much. In the end, he picked a sci-fi film that was famous around the world. She would be playing an Asian in the movie. Even though she was a supporting actress, any supporting character was great in a big production like this. Anyone who could get into this production was the cream of the crop. It would make for a great start if Harmony could be shown to the global audience this summer. Ezekiel put the script down and massaged his forehead. It was 2.30 a.m., and someone was calling him. Ezekiel picked it up. Hello. Sir, the master wants you back at the manor. He wishes to speak with you. Now, yes. Ezekiel checked the time. Sure, I'll come back right away. 
He then went to the airport and texted Harmony after he boarded his flight. Miss Mayo, I need to leave. The script is already decided. Someone from the set will contact you. See you around. The next morning, Harmony groggily picked her phone up to check the time. She saw that message and sat up with a jolt, waking up completely. Ezekiel left. Two days later, someone from the set came to talk with Harmony. Harmony knew Ezekiel got her a job, but she didn't think it was a world-famous big-budget production, and it was a sci-fi movie, too. The franchise was at its sixth entry and the one where the climax would happen. Harmony was given the script, which was written in both Chinese and English. If she made it, her character would be an instant classic. As for Ezekiel, he never showed up anymore. The set would deal with this production by themselves entirely. The set treated Harmony like a VIP, and they were patient with her. On the fourth day, Harmony checked out the set and her costume. It was a fluttering western dress. It looked beautiful and elegant. She then met both directors and the three assistant directors, and then she met the male and female leads for the movie. They happily greeted her. Harmony had the honor of watching their masterful performance. Then, the editor and person in charge of her character talked to her about the origins of the character and what she had to show in the movie. Miss Mayo, have you learned any martial arts back in your home country? Harmony mused and nodded. A little. Good. We'll be using that. A week went by. Harmony was immersed in work, but she realized she hadn't seen Ezekiel after his message. It was like he disappeared after giving her a mission. But since the movie had to be aired during the summer holidays, and Harmony's character's scenes would only be shot later in the production, her schedule was tight. Ten days later, Sarah and Harmony moved into the set and stayed there. Sarah hired a professional translator for the contract signing and a lot of the procedures, which made work easier for her. Presently, Harmony was in the car. Noticing her dour mood, Sarah asked, What's wrong? Are you tired? No, Harmony mumbled. I haven't seen him for a week. He's probably busy, Sarah mentioned. I know he hasn't shown up, but he's arranged for your script and character. The best thing you can do for him is to portray the character well. Will we meet again? Harmony felt sad. Ezekiel felt so far away from her all of a sudden. Back in the manor, Ezekiel walked with his mother. He came back this time because his family told him to join in an election. Ezekiel, I saw you walking the red carpet with a lady a while ago. Did you find a girlfriend? Sophia looked at her son curiously. Ezekiel shook his head. I was just helping her, mom. We're not dating. Is that so? Do you like her, then? Sophia asked. Ezekiel mused over it and answered honestly. I do like her. I see. Sophia knew her son was an opinionated person since he was a child. He could do anything well, even without supervision. She had observed the ladies around Ezekiel and told him to stay away from those who only wanted him for riches and prestige. She wanted her son's wife to marry him because of love, not money. You call the shots for your relationship. Our family will be holding the election this time, so you might not be able to leave the house for a while. I know, Mom. I'll deal with this matter before I leave. Ezekiel nodded. He went back to the study and picked his phone up. Even though he hadn't been contacting Harmony, the set would send him emails every day, reporting their progress. Ezekiel scrolled until he found Harmony's number, and he texted, Is work exhausting? Are they pressuring you? Meanwhile, Harmony was hanging from a wire, doing a midair stunt herself. She had been trained in dancing for 10 years and had great moves. She finished her stunts in one fell swoop. Even the director was impressed, and he gave her a thumbs up. It had been 10 days since Harmony joined the set. Since her scenes were tight, they were taken consecutively. Ever since she went into the set, she almost never came out. All the events back home were postponed or cancelled. What Harmony needed to do now was not expand her popularity but accumulate enough work to stand firm in the industry. Shooting was hard, and she did feel a lot of pressure, but she held on. She went into the bathroom at night and checked the mark left by the wire on her back. It was so painful that she couldn't touch any water, but she gritted her teeth and held on. Harmony could have a half-hour break after the scene. She took the phone from Sarah and plopped down on the couch. 
Out of habit, she checked her messages, and what she saw made her eyes go wide. She stared at her phone in disbelief. Sarah, he texted me. She was excited. Equally excited, Sarah sat with her. What did he say? Just saying hi. Harmony smiled sweetly. Sarah patted her. Chat with him. I'll get you something to eat. Harmony looked at the message. She wasn't someone who would complain since that would only worry everyone. She texted, I'm fine. It's not exhausting. Where are you now? Harmony waited for his reply quietly, but then her phone started to ring. She checked it out and immediately felt like she was holding a hot potato. He's calling. Surprised, she heaved a sigh and took the call. Hi, Mr. Weiss. I went away in a hurry last time and didn't tell you. I'm back at my family's place, dealing with some business. I can't see you for now. Don't worry about it. You do what you have to. We can meet when you have time. Harmony would not complain now. Is work hard on you? It's all right. Everyone's patient with me, and we get along well, said Harmony. She knew that she only was treated well not because of her abilities but because she had ties with Ezekiel. One of the crew members waved at her, and her heart squeezed up. Time for another scene. Reluctantly, she said, I have to go now, Mr. Weiss. Another scene is coming up. Talk to you next time, Ezekiel said swiftly. Talk later. Harmony was reluctant to go. She didn't hang up, hoping he would talk more, but he hung up, thinking she had ended the call. Harmony bit her lip and smiled bitterly. What was I thinking? He gave me a perfect chance. I should seize it instead of fantasizing about impossible stuff. After work was done for the day, Harmony went back to the hotel. She held her phone throughout the way, yet she didn't have the courage to disturb Ezekiel. Sarah saw through her, and she huddled closer. Harmony, listen to me. He helped us mostly because he has high hopes for you, but that doesn't mean he likes you romantically. Make that clear. Harmony knew what Sarah was trying to say, and she blushed. Fortunately, the car was dark. She said earnestly, Sarah, I know. I wasn't thinking about that. You're still young. There are tons of opportunities waiting for you out there. Once you make a name for yourself, you'll have options. Even when it comes to romance, you'll have the power to decide for yourself, said Sarah. Harmony looked outside the window, immersed in her thoughts. She wouldn't consider marriage unless, she smiled bitterly. No way. There's no way that will happen. I'll stay single forever. Harmony was still popular back in her home country because of the fashion show. The media was happy to keep her popularity alive since they received rumors of a powerful person helping Harmony out. The media was sensitive to stuff like this, so they didn't dare offend Harmony anymore. Catalina managed to get Ruben a movie back in their home country, but she didn't find any news about Harmony. It was as if Harmony had disappeared into thin air. She didn't attend any events, nor did she show herself. Where did she go? That was the question Harmony's fans had. Why don't we see her now? Three months went by in a flash. Harmony would occasionally receive a call from Ezekiel, but they didn't chat too much. He was probably busy. She didn't disturb him. One day, Sarah got news of Harmony's Asian film getting an award back in their home country. The organizers invited Harmony to the award ceremony, and the crew members contacted them, too. Sarah happily told the organizers Harmony would be there to receive the award. Harmony's shoot was ending, the crew would be wrapping up at the end of April, and Harmony could return in early May to kickstart her business back in her country. Harmony was happy about the news, too. That film was her lucky movie. She got her first Best Actress award after filming for a long time, and she was even nominated twice. May was an important month for the Pressgraves as well because their daughter's wedding would be held this month. The chilly winds of spring had come to an end, and the early warmth of summer came. On a beautiful day like this, Willow would don her wedding gown and enter a marriage with the person she loved. The Weisses, even though they were abroad, received an invitation too. Only Ezekiel and his mother would return for the wedding since Ezekiel's father couldn't leave his post. Harmony's shooting was finally done, and she could finally return to her home country. Before she boarded her flight, she couldn't hold back and texted Ezekiel. Mr. Weiss, the shoot is over. I'm coming back now. See you back home. 
She then turned on airplane mode. It had been six months since she left home. She gained a lot after the red carpet procession the week before. The media praised her to high heavens, and the internet was filled with pretty photos of her. Her social media followers had also hit the 5 million mark. Sarah kept Harmony's overseas shooting a secret, so naturally, the crew members wouldn't tell anyone about it either. No one knew she had a role in a famous international movie for now. They would find out once the movie was released. The flight took more than 20 hours. Harmony slept all the way back as she was too exhausted. When they disembarked, she and Sarah pushed their luggage out. Sarah told her to wear a mask and a pair of sunglasses. They got a cab at the airport and went back to their condominium. Harmony then remembered that her phone was still in airplane mode, so she turned it off, and she received a few texts. Her heart started to race, and she checked the messages. She saw Ezekiel's text. See you back home, Ezekiel texted. Her eyes went wide. Am I seeing this right? He's coming back too. We're going to meet back home. Sarah was asleep, and Harmony held her phone to her chest, hiding her delight within her heart. Harmony stayed at Sarah's place for the time being since Sarah had to talk to her about work. In order to develop Harmony's career, Sarah had been trying to get more jobs for her. In the end, Sarah chose an interview for Harmony to do. Harmony, they asked for this interview. I think you're well known enough for it. What do you think? Sarah smiled at her. Harmony picked up the contract and went through it earnestly. Sarah added, almost all award-winning actors have gone to this interview. This is one of the many ways to make you more famous. Sure, I'll do it. Harmony nodded. Spending time abroad made her more confident about herself, and she had one thing she must do to become a better version of herself. Even if not for herself, then for the favor Ezekiel did for her. She must be better. I'll talk to the TV guys then. Sarah picked up her phone and talked to the person in charge at the TV station. They agreed to meet up in the afternoon and write a draft of the script for the session. Catalina was made aware of the news soon enough. She had a lot of connections in the industry, and people would tell her about every move Harmony was making. Everyone in the industry knew she and Harmony were at odds. What? Someone like her was invited. Yeah, our main editor wanted her. I can't believe she's qualified now. Then, I'll make her embarrass herself. What are you going to do, Catalina? When she goes on stage, change out the host's script, Catalina said. She was an expert saboteur. Not a bad idea, Catalina. It's a live show. Even if the host knows it's the wrong script, they can do nothing about it. I bet Harmony's going to be embarrassed. Catalina planned to bribe one of the TV station's assistants. Even if the assistant was fired over this, she would give them monetary compensation. As long as someone was greedy enough, they would take this job. Harmony came to the TV station that afternoon and confirmed the questions that would be asked. All the questions were prepared beforehand so she wouldn't scramble for answers during the show. The session went on for more than an hour. Before Harmony left, she received a copy of the script and was told to memorize it at night. Her slot would be on Friday. The next afternoon, Catalina asked to meet with one of the TV station's assistants, Esther. She was the one who could get a hold of the final scripts before the show. Catalina said, do me a favor, Esther. Once you succeed, I'll pay you 75,000 right away. Ruby's eyes lit up at the mention of 500,000. It was a huge temptation for her. Tell me your plan directly, Catalina. Switch Harmony's script and make the host read the script I gave you, Catalina explained. Ruby hesitated, understanding that Catalina intended to tamper with Harmony's interview. I'll get fired if I do this, she said. The 500,000 is your compensation. If you refuse, I can find someone else, Catalina stated. As soon as Ruby heard this, she quickly agreed. I'll do it, Catalina. I'll help you. Catalina handed her the script and said, I'll give you half now. Once the job's done, I'll pay the rest. No room for failure, I won't let you off otherwise. After hearing her half-threatening words, Ruby immediately replied, don't worry. I have my way. Catalina smiled and couldn't wait to see Harmony embarrass herself. At noon, Harmony had lunch with the former crew director. 
Now, she had already received a script handed to her. It was the leading role, and she had collaborated with him before and trusted his skills. Thus, she agreed to take on his new script. At the airport, a giant private plane landed, and two people disembarked. Ezekiel had just returned just in time for the Presgrave family's wedding in two days. He accompanied his mother out of the airport and returned to his grandparents' home. In the evening, Ezekiel dressed casually and came downstairs. He saw Martha was watching a movie. Due to their age, they liked watching classic dramas. Ezekiel looked at the TV and noticed Harmony's figure. He smiled and sat next to his grandmother as they watched the movie together. Martha pointed at the actress, Harmony, and said, I like this girl. She acts so well. He shifted his gaze to Harmony. Her various displays of dresses were pleasing to the eye. Looking at her, Martha couldn't help but admire. I also liked wearing these kinds of dresses when I was young. However, she wore better than me. Grandma, I can introduce you to her if you want. Oh, do you know her? She asked in surprise. He smiled and nodded. We're friends. That's great. I really want to meet her. Of course, you don't have to make it too formal. We can just have a meal together someday, Martha said. She couldn't believe she could enjoy the feeling of being a fan at her age. Okay, I'll arrange it. Ezekiel was determined to fulfill her request. Soon, it was Friday. Due to Harmony's busy schedule recently, she felt sleep-deprived. After finishing her lunch, she had some time to sleep as she aimed to be in good condition for the 6 p.m. evening program. As she drifted into sleep, she had a dream. In her dream, she saw Ezekiel. She joyfully chased after him in the crowd, but she couldn't catch up to him no matter how fast she was. Although he seemed right in front of her, he didn't seem to hear her calls from behind as he continued to chat with others. It was an exhausting dream, but Harmony was unwilling to wake up. She was determined to greet him somehow. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, she shouted in her dream. Suddenly, an otherworldly ringtone sounded. Just as she felt annoyed, she suddenly realized she might be dreaming. Without opening her eyes, she reached for her phone and pressed the answer button with a sense of familiarity. Hello, who's this? She mumbled. A charming and husky voice came from the other end. Are you sleeping, Miss Mayo? In that split second, Harmony's eyes snapped open, and she moved the phone away to check the caller ID. When she saw who it was, she was wide awake instantly. It was Ezekiel, not the man from her dream. Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Weiss. Have you returned? Harmony asked excitedly. I'm back. Are you tired from working? Ezekiel asked with concern. It's not that tiring. Thanks for asking. Harmony's heart warmed. Listening to Ezekiel's words, she felt her energy replenished. Do you have time tonight? He asked. After hearing that, she wondered if he was asking for a meetup. Just as she was about to agree gladly, she suddenly remembered she had a show that night. I, I'm free tonight, but I must record a show at 6 p.m. first. Harmony panicked. She was torn between not wanting to reject Ezekiel's invitation and being caught up with work. Until when? It starts at 6 p.m. and ends at 7 p.m. We can meet after that if you still have time. If not, we can reschedule, she said, worried about conflicting schedules. No problem. We can meet at 7 p.m. and have dinner together. Okay. Will that make you stay hungry with me? She didn't want him to suffer. Not at all. Tonight, besides me, my grandmother will also be there. She's your fan and wants to meet you. Oh. Harmony blushed. She didn't expect Ezekiel's grandmother to like her. It was truly a great honor. My grandmother really likes the classic drama you filmed. Of course, she also admires your acting skills. It's my honor for her to like me, she replied as she had gained a genuine admirer. Where are you recording the show? I'll find a restaurant nearby, and we can go together after you finish. Sure, I'm recording at NBO News. There are many good restaurants around. I'll make a reservation, Harmony said as she was eager to treat him to a meal. No need. Just focus on the show. I'll handle the reservation. Next time, you can treat me, Ezekiel said. She didn't insist any further and replied, All right. See you tonight then. See you tonight. Um, can you come to watch my show? Tonight, we're inviting 50 people to attend.
I can reserve a seat for you. She braced herself and asked. Still, she wouldn't mind if he had other plans. Ezekiel agreed without hesitation. Sure, I'll be there. It's in Studio 6. We start at 6 p.m., but you can come a bit later. It's not a problem, Harmony said. She would be thrilled even if he stayed for just 10 minutes. Okay, I'll drop my grandmother off at the restaurant before picking you up, he said. All right, thank you, Mr. Weiss. She felt happy. No worries, he said in a low voice. I won't disturb you then, Harmony said. Okay, see you tonight. Ezekiel finished speaking and hung up the phone. After hanging up the phone, she joyfully sank onto the couch, embracing her phone while giggling. She couldn't believe that he would come to watch her show tonight. She was determined to perform well and not stutter during her speech on stage. She would handle everything with composure. She took the script she was looking for in the morning and meticulously studied it, committing every detail to memory as if gearing up for an exam. Little did she realize that her script for the night had been tampered with. Harmony shared this exciting news with Sarah, who was also delighted. After all, the mysterious Ezekiel was finally going to make an appearance. At 4 p.m., Harmony arrived at the television station early for makeup. The station had arranged for a sponsor to provide her with the dress to showcase her elegance. The dress had a classical charm, and when she changed into it, she looked fascinating. Even her hairstyle mimicked the one from her film roles, and her makeup looked elegant. She cooperated with the makeup artist since she would meet someone she wanted to see. Miss Mayo, you look stunning in this dress. Others can't have the same vibe as you, and your figure is simply amazing, the chief editor praised her as he came over. Chapter 2691. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. Marcus Mortz. Harmony smiled confidently. At this moment, Ruby was also watching Harmony not far away as she held the script for tonight. She first had the chief editor to review it before handing it to an intern. The intern held the script and would soon deliver it to the studio. Time was ticking away, and Sarah was also waiting outside. At this moment, Ruby's phone rang. She took out her phone and saw it was Catalina calling. Hello, Catalina, Ruby answered in a hushed tone. Did you do as I instructed? The script will soon be switched. Don't worry, everything is according to plan. Good, I'll be waiting for a good show. You can look forward to seeing Harmony make a fool of herself. Ruby said. Not only had Catalina bribed Ruby, but she also used the connection of her mother's company and established a good relationship with the host. As long as the host performed usually, everything would go smoothly. After hanging up the phone, Ruby turned to greet Harmony with an adoring expression. Miss Mayo, I really love your movie. Thank you, Harmony responded with a smile. Harmony, let's get ready. It's already 5.40 p.m. Let's go. There's also a two-minute fan meeting over there. Okay. Harmony nodded. Just as she left the corridor, some fans approached boldly, presenting flowers to her. These are flowers for you, Miss Mayo. I hope you like them. Here's a small gift too. Thank you. Harmony smiled gratefully. Wow. She looks even more beautiful up close, and her figure is even better. She's simply a goddess. You are so beautiful. I love you so much. A male fan exclaimed. When Harmony smiled and looked at him, his heart raced. Harmony, I love you. You are my goddess. Thank you, everyone. After interacting with fans for two minutes, Harmony was guided to a lounge by the staff. After a ten-minute wait, she was welcomed by the enthusiastic female host. She sat in the studio amid the warm cheers of her fans. At this moment, the intern placed the script in front of the female host. She glanced at the script and noticed the questions written on it. However, the Martin family had already talked to the female host about it and told her to follow the mistaken script, disregarding the consequences. Ruby stood nearby and watched with a triumphant smile as the script was presented to the host. Harmony took a deep breath and looked at the entrance. Right now, she was anticipating the long-awaited figure to appear. She had pondered whether Ezekiel would show up, but her expectations weren't too high. After all, she could empathize with someone as busy as him possibly being unable to attend. 
Just then, the director made a gesture, indicating that the live broadcast had begun. The host skillfully led the opening of the show, introducing today's guest, Harmony. Hello, everyone. I'm Harmony Mayo. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm honored to participate in this interview. Let's start with a casual chat, Miss Mayo. We're all curious about how you walked the red carpet at Fashion Week. Did the brand invite you, or did you use some connections? Harmony was surprised when she heard the host's words. She looked up at the host, who was smiling and waiting for her response. Of course, the entire audience and her fans were also waiting. Harmony didn't expect the TV station to ask such an unexpected question. Still, she smiled and replied, I'm honored to attend Fashion Week. It was my friend who invited me to accompany him on stage and walk the runway together. Oh, so, you walk the red carpet through your friend's connection. That makes us even more curious. According to our information, it was a male friend. Can you tell us about your relationship with him? Are you friends? Or is he someone special? The host continued to inquire. Facing the unexpected questions, Harmony tried to maintain a smile while thinking of a plan in her mind. She hadn't anticipated the TV station would prepare two sets of scripts and wondered if this was a play to manipulate celebrities for increased viewership. We are just friends. Well, what is your opinion of being on the red carpet, Miss Mayo? Do you think such behavior has ethical implications? The host continued to inquire. Meanwhile, Sarah was anxious as she saw Harmony being bullied on stage. Sarah quickly found the deputy director and asked, Sir, what's going on? These questions aren't the ones my artist agreed upon. Why are they asking random questions now? She questioned angrily. We're not sure about this. It's a live broadcast, so we can't switch the scripts now, the deputy director explained. He noticed that the current views had already reached 50 million and thought tonight might hit 100 million views. Thus, in terms of profits, he wouldn't stop these actions since he believed these sharp questions would attract more attention than the initially planned ones. On stage, Harmony answered her opinion on being on the red carpet. Then, the host continued with a smile, Miss Mayo, we believe the fans have witnessed your acting skills. Not only are you skillful in acting, but you are also a beauty. Our fans are interested in whether you've had plastic surgery or not. Could you share aspects to consider if one decides to get plastic surgery? This question directly labeled Harmony as someone who had done plastic surgery before. Harmony smiled and replied, I don't know much about this because I haven't had any experience. Sorry about that. The host chuckled and eased the awkwardness. Oh my, Miss Mayo doesn't want to discuss this topic. Let's move on to the next question, then. In the meantime, Harmony was already annoyed. She hadn't expected the TV station to play such a dirty trick and wanted the interview to end as soon as possible. Miss Mayo, you started your career at a young age. We believe you've encountered many actors. So, please tell us which three actors you dislike the most. You can use initials instead of names. This question was clearly meant to create conflict. Harmony couldn't answer this question, so she simply shook her head with a smile and said, I don't hate anyone because I think they are all wonderful people and have taken good care of me in many ways. The host continued to smile, appearing friendly. However, her eyes were filled with malice. She picked up the script and said, Okay, we'll have a rapid Q&A next. If your boyfriend is angry, how will you quickly appease him? She asked. Harmony calmly replied, it depends on the situation. Adults should resolve issues rationally. Under what circumstances did you and your boyfriend first have an intimate relationship? In that split second, Harmony was speechless. On the other hand, a tall and handsome figure had quietly taken a seat in the back row. Since Harmony was entirely focused on the host's questions, she didn't notice that someone had arrived. After hearing this question, the man narrowed his eyes in displeasure. He could not help but ponder, what kind of interview is this? All the questions are filled with ill intentions. Harmony blushed, and her eyes shimmered. After all, this question was impossible to answer. Although she had been in a relationship with Reuben for five years, they never engaged in a sexual relationship. It wasn't that she didn't want to answer, but this question was too personal. 
Whether she answered or not, it would have an impact on her. In the meantime, the fans were also expressing their dissatisfaction. After all, this wasn't the appropriate way to treat their idol. Harmony pursed her red lips, and the camera deliberately zoomed in on her face, wanting to capture her embarrassed expression more clearly. Well, Harmony was lost for words, unsure of how to reply. At this moment, a deep voice resonated, you don't have to answer that. The entire studio was shocked. Fans turned their heads with wide eyes. At the same time, Harmony was thrilled as she realized that Ezekiel actually came. He stepped onto the stage and ignored the gazes as he took Harmony's hand. Let's go. Sir, this is a live interview. Leaving without permission is a breach of contract, the host hurriedly interjected. Ezekiel glanced at the host coldly and said, I will handle the rest. Harmony didn't fully react to the situation, but he had already held her hand tightly. In front of the female host, the director, the fans, and nearly 80 million viewers nationwide, she was led out of the interview room by Ezekiel. As he led her down the corridor, Sarah approached eagerly. She was grateful for his help but was still concerned since Harmony was a celebrity. Hence, this behavior wouldn't sit well with the TV station and would affect her career. You're here, Mr. Weiss, you're here. That's wonderful, Sarah said. I'll take her away first. I'll handle any breach of contract issues, he said. At that moment, the deputy director rushed over and blocked their way. Please stop. The live broadcast has been interrupted, and we need an explanation to the audience. Please wait here for our instructions. Harmony scolded, Kent Donner, why is the script different from what we discussed? Did you change the script? We will investigate this matter, but your actions today have violated the terms of our contract, Miss Mayo. You may need to bear the responsibility of compensation. Kent snarled. After all, the views had almost reached 90 million, yet Harmony cut off such a high-profile broadcast. Thus, he was furious. Then, he turned his gaze to Ezekiel. Who might you be, sir? Why do you have the right to take away our guest without permission? You have no right to do this. He is my friend, she explained. Then, on second thought, she added, he is my boyfriend. He has the right to do so. Please don't cause trouble for him. I don't care what kind of relationship you guys had, but you have violated our television station's rights. Hence, you must stay here and deal with this until we are all satisfied with the result. Ezekiel's face already showed signs of annoyance. Then, he said sternly, step aside. Kent was taken aback and looked at Ezekiel, who emitted an intimidating aura. At that moment, Kent felt a sense of trouble and wondered if Ezekiel was someone from a wealthy family. We're leaving, Ezekiel said as he dragged Harmony away. Regardless of the consequences or the amount of compensation, she was also willing to face it. Ezekiel held her hand until they exited the building and arrived at the parking lot. After they got into the car, he let out a sigh of relief and leaned toward her. Did I scare you? She pursed her red lips and shook her head with a smile. No, what you did back then was cool. Thank you. He smiled and reassured her. Don't worry, I'll handle this matter. It was the television station that broke the agreement first. They played a dirty trick, giving me a completely different script than they used on stage. I will take legal action against them, Harmony said, not wanting to be treated like a pushover. Good. I'll provide you with a lawyer, and we'll make the television station publicly apologize to you in front of the entire people, Ezekiel declared, wanting to help her vent her frustration. How much does your lawyer charge? She asked curiously. Ezekiel gripped the steering wheel elegantly W while turning his head with a smile. It's free for you. Harmony was momentarily stunned before nodding in response. Okay, then, thank you in advance. At this moment, the television station quickly switched to other programs and promptly issued an announcement the live broadcast concluded ahead of schedule due to health concerns affecting the artist. Facing the deputy director's accusation, Sarah refused to back down. Compensation. You should be the one compensating my artist. It is unacceptable that you intentionally made things difficult for her. Miss Longjohn, I think it's best if we don't make things ugly. If your artist doesn't want her reputation to be affected, we better resolve this privately, the deputy director suggested. 
How do you suggest we resolve it? Sarah asked. Have your artist issue an apology to us in the form of a video. Also, you must compensate us according to the breach of contract terms in the agreement. However, Sarah was not willing to compromise. That's impossible. Let's settle this in court. Are you sure you want to go to court with our station? We have the best lawyers, so you have no chance of winning, the deputy director threatened. At the thought of Ezekiel, Sarah straightened her back with confidence. We can afford to retain an international legal counsel. Just you wait. After saying that, Sarah left. The deputy director, with his arms crossed, sneered, how dare she spit nonsense. All right, then, we'll see what she has up her sleeve. Meanwhile, Ruby thought Harmony would endure these problems until the end, but she was unexpectedly taken away by a mysterious and handsome man halfway through. Now that the entire incident had escalated, she thought she could shift the blame to the intern, but she quickly realized that even her job might be on the line. Ruby, come here. Natalie Lawson, the host, called out to her angrily. Ruby immediately went to Natalie's office, where Natalie threw the script harshly at her. What's going on? Why is the script you gave me different? Did you change it? Ruby knew that Natalie had also received favors from Catalina, yet now she was trying to shift all the blame to her. Sorry, Nat. I didn't do it on purpose. Moreover, it wasn't my mistake. It was the intern who messed up. I'll make her take responsibility for this right away. You better not involve me in this matter. Now, go and settle it. Natalie ordered. Ruby nodded quickly. She thought that if she pushed this issue onto the intern, she could save herself. As soon as Ruby went out, the intern ran over to her. Ruby, how did the script get messed up? Why are you asking me? Wasn't it you who messed up? How dare you ask me that question? Ruby sneered. I, I got it from you. Why didn't you check it? It was your responsibility. You were the last person to review it, and yet, you still made a mistake. Admit your mistake to the director. This has nothing to do with me. After saying that, Ruby left with a disdainful snort. Soon, her phone rang. It was a call from Catalina, so she quickly found a secluded place to answer the call. Hey, Catalina. What happened? Why was the live broadcast cut off? Did something happen? Well, a man suddenly barged in and took Harmony away. We're helpless. Even our deputy director is furious now. What man? I just took a photo. Let me send it to you. After saying that, Ruby sent the photo. On the other end, Catalina let out a surprised exclamation when she saw the photo. How could it be him? Catalina, do you know this person? Who is he? I don't know him. Ruby, you must keep your mouth shut about this. Never reveal my involvement, or I won't pay the remaining 37.5 thousand. Don't worry. I will keep this a secret. I'll just blame the whole incident on our intern. It's no big deal, Ruby replied in a confident tone. As for Catalina, her nerves tightened. She hadn't expected Ezekiel to appear, which meant that the situation had become more complicated. If Harmony sought help from Ezekiel and intervened, not only Ruby but the entire television station would be affected. Catalina only wished for this matter not to implicate her. Meanwhile, Harmony sat in Ezekiel's car and arrived at the restaurant. She was in a traditional attire that made her exude a special charm. Ezekiel hadn't properly appreciated it at the television station, but now, his gaze couldn't help but linger on her. As they entered the restaurant, Ezekiel noticed that when Harmony appeared, all the men around couldn't take their eyes off her. Whether young or old, their gazes were fixed on her, especially on her chest. Ezekiel suddenly felt displeased. He stepped forward to block half of Harmony's figure. Harmony was momentarily surprised, her pretty face blushing slightly. Their sudden closeness made her feel like she was in a dream, and she was torn between not wanting to push him away and not daring to take the initiative. She was afraid that it was just a man's fleeting fancy. When they arrived at the door of a private room, Ezekiel knocked on it before pushing the door open. Cecilia Anders was sitting alone inside, having been in there for quite some time. When she saw her grandson and the movie star like Harmony entering, her eyes instantly lit up, and she felt ten years younger in an instant. Oh, my, you're gorgeous, Miss Mayo. Cecilia personally came forward to welcome her. 
Harmony felt pleasantly surprised. She looked at the kind old lady and then at Ezekiel. Noticing the joyful look on his grandmother's face, Ezekiel introduced her to Harmony. This is my grandmother. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Harmony greeted her. Cecilia was delighted to hear that. She nodded while exclaiming, it is very nice to meet you too. I would have been delighted if I had such a beautiful granddaughter. Ezekiel widened his eyes slightly. Is my dear grandmother planning to officially acknowledge Harmony as her granddaughter? Harmony simply continued smiling and enjoyed the feeling of being adored. Come and have a seat, darling. Cecilia pulled Harmony to sit beside her. The more she looked at the young woman, the more she liked her. When Cecilia turned to her tall and handsome grandson, a thought suddenly crossed her mind. If her grandson could win Harmony's heart and marry her, it meant they would be a family. Cecilia wouldn't have to formally acknowledge Harmony as a granddaughter anymore. Harmony could just become her granddaughter-in-law. Ezekiel, how did you and Miss Mayo get to know each other? Cecilia asked curiously. Smiling, Ezekiel responded, it's a strange fate. We first met at the airport. Looking embarrassed, Harmony added, I bumped into him and accidentally dropped the gemstone from my necklace onto him. That's fate, Cecilia exclaimed. After that, Miss Mayo came looking for me, so we met again, Ezekiel finished, seemingly recalling their encounter in the hotel. A hint of a meaningful smile played on his lips. Hearing that, Harmony no longer dared to make eye contact with him. She nodded in agreement and pursed her red lips. Yes, I went looking for him because the gemstone is very important to me. What happened afterward? Did you meet again, or did you just meet tonight? Cecilia continued asking questions as she was curious about the progress of their relationship. We met later in Dansbury and became good friends, Ezekiel answered. Hearing him add the word, good, before, friends, in front of his grandmother, Harmony presented a shy smile. Come on, darling, order anything you like, you must be hungry. Cecilia then took the menu over. Harmony and Cecilia ordered together, and the food arrived quickly. After that, Cecilia began chatting about Harmony's movie, discussing the plot, and praising her acting skills. Ezekiel remained silent on the side, but amid his grandmother's praise, his eyes were filled with amusement. Harmony exchanged glances with him several times and averted her gaze shyly each time. As dinner came to an end, Harmony's phone rang. Seeing it was Sarah, she said to Cecilia, Ma'am, please allow me to take this call. Sure. Go ahead. We're not strangers, Cecilia replied. Hey, Sarah, Harmony answered the phone. Harmony, have you finished eating? Something happened at the television station just now. An intern climbed to the rooftop emotionally distressed and even threatened to jump. What? How's the situation now? They're still in a standoff, and we don't know how to persuade her. The fire department has arrived as well. What can I do? Harmony was anxious now. No matter what, she couldn't let the situation escalate to the point of someone attempting such a dangerous stunt. Just then, Sarah seemed to be talking to someone else. What? You want my artist to come and talk to her? No way. She can't go to the rooftop. It's too dangerous. When Harmony heard that, she stated outright, Sarah, I can come and talk to her. I'll come over right away. Harmony, you don't need to, Sarah's attempt to dissuade her was cut short as Harmony ended the call. Turning to Cecilia, Harmony apologized to the elderly woman. I'm sorry, ma'am, I have an urgent matter to attend to. I'll treat you to a meal next time. Ezekiel immediately stood up. What's the matter? I'll come with you. But, it seems urgent. Let Ezekiel take you. I'll have the driver take me home later, Cecilia suggested before adding to her grandson, take good care of Miss Mayo. All right, Grandma. After saying that, he urged Harmony, let's go. As soon as they were in the corridor, Harmony briefed Ezekiel on the intern threatening to jump from the rooftop. He could tell she was anxious. Faced with a stranger, her anxiety revealed her inherently kind nature. Okay. Let's hurry over, Ezekiel said, taking her with him. The television station was nearby, so they could hear the sounds of the fire department and the crowd below. It seemed like things were getting out of control. Sarah noticed Harmony immediately and rushed over to persuade her. Harmony, we shouldn't go up. 
it's too high, and the rooftop is too dangerous. At that moment, the police arrived and addressed Harmony, you're the artist, aren't you? Please go up and try to persuade the intern to come down. Harmony nodded without an ounce of hesitation. All right, I'll go up. Just then, someone grabbed her hand. In the same determined tone, he uttered, I'll come with you. Harmony anxiously turned to see the man behind her. No, you can't go up. It's too dangerous. That's exactly why I must come with you, Ezekiel insisted, leading her along with the police. The scene was chaotic. The police and firefighters were present, and the entire television station staff gathered outside to watch. Ruby was among those in the crowd. Though she was also panicking, she actually wished the intern would jump. It would cost the intern's life, but it could save her and Natalie's jobs. When Ruby went to the rooftop earlier, she saw the intern standing there while shouting frantically, I've been wronged. I didn't change the script. It wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Terrified, Ruby hurriedly came down. She was afraid the intern would come after her, and she couldn't believe how a seemingly quiet pushover could carry out such a dangerous act. At that moment, Ruby saw a figure entering the passage. She immediately lowered her head, growing even more anxious. What's going on? Why is Harmony here too? What is she here for? Just then, Ruby's phone rang. She quickly picked it up to find that it was a call from Catalina. Hello, Catalina. How's the situation now? The intern is still going crazy on the rooftop, insisting on jumping off. The police and firefighters are there now. Also, I just saw Harmony. She's here too. What? What is she doing there? I don't know, but I saw her heading toward the elevator. I'm wondering if she's going up to persuade the intern. Catalina sounded annoyed on the other end. What's the use of her going up? This whole thing happened because of her in the first place. She's just trying to seize an opportunity to gain attention. What a despicable woman. She's an expert in acting. Ruby, go up with her and see what's happening. All right, I'll head up right now. I'm outside too, but I can't show myself. Anyway, make sure you handle this matter properly. If that lunatic wants to jump off, let her jump. We shouldn't care about her life or death, Catalina uttered coldly. Right, I agree that it's not necessary to waste our time with her. She brought this upon herself. Who can she blame? Ruby shared the same opinion as Catalina. At this moment, Harmony took a deep breath in the elevator and maintained a relatively calm and rational demeanor. She was contemplating how to persuade the intern once they reached the rooftop. The police had briefed her on the situation. The intern was emotionally distressed due to unpleasant work issues. As the elevator dinged and signaled their arrival on the top floor, Harmony could see over a dozen firefighters on standby to prepare for an emergency. On the other hand, the intern was sitting at the rooftop railing, screaming loudly at anyone who approached. Everyone was afraid of getting close to her, fearing they might agitate her into jumping. Although preparations were made downstairs, nobody dared to guarantee a successful intervention due to the uncertainty of catching her from a building that was more than 30 stories high. Therefore, the situation was dangerous. Miss Mayo, please try talking to her now. See if you can persuade her to come back. We've tried everything, a police officer suggested. Harmony took a deep breath and uttered, sure, I'll give it a try. In a low voice, Ezekiel added, I'll do it with you. Sir, you can't do it with her. The young lady is extremely emotional. Please don't agitate her. We will ensure Miss Mayo's safety, the police advised. Harmony also turned back to reassure Ezekiel. Don't worry, I'll be fine. With that, she took careful steps onto the rooftop and called out the girl's name. Cindy, calm down. Tonight's incident is not your fault. Please calm down first. When Cindy turned around and saw Harmony, her eyes showed a hint of joy. Miss Mayo, why are you here? Cindy, I know you've been wrongly accused. I know you didn't switch the script. Come down, and I'll help you investigate so you can clear your name. What do you say? Harmony approached while persuading. Luckily, Cindy didn't resist her approach. In the night breeze, Harmony's slender figure had no threatening aura. Since Cindy was Harmony's fan, meeting the star tonight brought her considerable joy. Miss Mayo, do you really believe me? Cindy's gaze was filled with longing and approval. 
At this moment, she needed someone on her side, telling her she wasn't wrong. The deputy director had scolded her harshly in the evening, and her team leader, Ruby, had also blamed her for not doing her job right. Everyone attributed the failure of tonight's live broadcast to her, so it felt like a disastrous ordeal for her. Because of all that, she contemplated ending it all, thinking that life had lost its meaning. I believe you. I know someone is trying to hurt me in this matter, but I'm sure it's not you, Harmony sincerely commented. It isn't me. I didn't switch the script, and I wasn't paid to do anything for someone else. Miss Mayo, it really wasn't me. Cindy's emotions fluctuated again, and she felt as if the world had abandoned her. Cindy, I know it wasn't you. I believe you, said Harmony, playing along with her. Cindy sniffed. Miss Mayo, it was my fault no matter what. I should have checked the script at the last moment to ensure it was okay. I'm sorry for the damage done to you because of my negligence. Harmony was only less than 10 feet from her now. With a few more steps, she could grab Cindy and pull her down. It's okay, Cindy. To be honest, I didn't suffer any damage tonight. Don't blame yourself for this. Everyone makes mistakes. Cindy suddenly broke down in tears, her body trembling slightly. But everyone's pinning the blame on me and passing the buck to me. They say it was my fault, like I'm a useless piece of trash. Standing not far away, Ezekiel instantly clenched his fists, noticing that Harmony was trying to approach the girl in an attempt to yank her down. Is she trying to get herself killed? What if that girl genuinely wants to jump and drags her along with her? Harmony, he called out to her in warning. She involuntarily turned around, followed by Cindy, who turned to stare at the incredibly handsome man in the light nearby. At that, it suddenly occurred to Harmony to try to catch Cindy's attention. As a means to calm her down, she could not help but reveal something about herself. Cindy, do you know who he is? He's my boyfriend. Just as she expected, Cindy, with the heart of a star-struck fan, was hooked. He's so good-looking. Yeah, he proposed to me today, and I'm still thinking about whether to accept him. Cindy, do you think I should marry him? said Harmony while getting within three feet of Cindy. She did not seem aggressive, like a gentle breeze blowing into Cindy's heart. As a result, Cindy dropped her guard completely. Are you getting married? She never thought she could listen to Harmony's secret alone. Harmony replied, this is a secret, I haven't made it public yet. He loves me very much, and I love him, too. We, just then, she suddenly took Cindy in her arms, dragging her toward the ground with all her might. Her mind was blank at that moment. She just kept trying to pull Cindy down. Cindy instinctively struggled for a moment. No, don't save me, let me die. Don't die, Cindy. Your death would only make those who did this to you feel more justified. You don't have to risk your own life. If you lose your job, you can find another one. But you only live once. To Harmony's surprise, she did not manage to pull Cindy down. Instead, Cindy seriously wanted to jump and almost dragged her along with her. Luckily, the firefighter who had been hiding nearby immediately rushed over, followed by a tall figure frantically scurrying over to them. The firefighter held onto Cindy while Ezekiel clasped Harmony tightly to his chest as if afraid she might disappear. Harmony's palms were also sweating. Her heart raced, and a layer of cold sweat formed on her forehead. Just then, she heard a hushed voice chiding, Are you out of your mind? Your life is just as precious as hers. It's Ezekiel. Such a good-tempered man chided me. Watching Cindy being carried away by the firefighter, she finally felt relieved. She looked up and smiled at the man who had scolded her. Don't worry. I'm fine. Like hell, you're fine. You were almost dragged off the building just a moment ago, he thought. Just then, the deputy director hurried over. To smooth things over, he had no choice but to apologize to Cindy, saying, Cindy, it was my fault for blaming you. I know what I said earlier was too harsh on you. Please don't take it to heart. We won't blame you for this matter, okay? Standing behind the crowd, Ruby started to panic when she saw Cindy being rescued. If Cindy survives, this matter will surely be investigated. At that moment, Cindy's parents also rushed over, embracing her while bursting into sobs. 
Realizing how her impulsive actions had hurt those who cared about her, she hugged her parents and cried as well. The perilous situation was resolved just like that. However, just when Harmony was about to leave, she suddenly realized one thing she was weak at the knees. She was extremely nervous while holding on to Cindy just now. Mr. Weiss, my legs are shaking. What should I do? She asked. She was not being dramatic, as her legs were shaking like jelly at that moment. Ezekiel lowered his head and chuckled. What else can you do? I'll carry you, he replied before scooping her up in his arms. Harmony buried her face in his chest, deciding not to care about whatever was happening outside. In any case, she felt exhilarated right then. At that moment, many reporters were around, naturally chasing after the couple to take pictures and thus capturing the thrilling scene of her saving someone. Due to that, all media outlets were commending her brave act of rescuing a person. Even the most authoritative TV stations also shared the news. This was something she had not anticipated. Her only thought back then was to save Cindy, she had never intended to publicize her actions or boost her popularity because of this incident. Sarah breathed a sigh of relief as she watched Harmony being carried by Ezekiel. After placing Harmony in her MPV, the man stood by the door, asking, are your legs still shaking? They're much better now, thank you, Mr. Weiss. You did great tonight, but don't do it again next time, said Ezekiel sternly in all seriousness. She blinked innocently, seeing her disheveled long hair, he could not help but reach out to smooth it. Go back and rest early. Don't think about anything tonight. Just relax. Okay. She pursed her lips in a smile. With him around, it seemed like she did not need to think about anything. Fame, live interviews, she could put all of these out of her mind. Sarah instructed the driver to start driving. Catalina spotted Harmony's MPV, too. At the same time, she saw Ezekiel standing on the roadside, seeing Harmony off. Sitting in her car, she was immediately pissed off by what she saw. She had thought tonight's incident would make Harmony a laughingstock, but contrary to her expectations, she ended up not only receiving praise but also gaining Ezekiel's protection. Now, the internet was abuzz with reports of tonight's incident. She gained sympathy thanks to the TV station deliberately giving her a hard time, while her act of saving someone drew praise from everyone. Damn it. She reaped all the benefits, she cursed. I've turned a winning hand into a lousy one. Now, all she could do was silence Ruby and forbid her from giving her away. Also, she had to pressure Ruby into admitting that all of this was her doing. A moment later, when Ruby showed up in her car, she tossed a bank card to her at once. Here's 150,000. Own up to this, and don't escalate things further. Ruby was greedy, though. She could own up to this, but she wanted more. Catalina, it's not quite right to give me only 150,000 for such a big deal, don't you think? How much do you want, then? At least this much. Ruby extended her palm. You want 500,000 for just a script. It's not that simple anymore. Someone has almost died from this. Catalina, you wouldn't want me to give you away, right? Despite her bitter reluctance, Catalina had no choice but to give Ruby 500,000 to settle the matter. Ruby then went to the TV station and admitted her guilt. She was fired instantly. On top of that, she had to pay damages to the TV station for tonight's incident, which totaled exactly 500,000. She was flabbergasted right away. Sir, how am I supposed to pay such a large sum? Do you think this money will go to our TV station? It's the sum we have to pay Harmony in compensation. What? You mean this money goes to her? That's right. We just spoke to her agent. She agrees not to make a fuss about this, but we have to pay them 500,000 in compensation. This is your fault. If you refuse to pay the sum, we'll have no choice but to have you jailed for a couple of years. Ruby was so angry that she nearly fainted as a result. Consequently, Catalina's money ended up going to Harmony instead. Meanwhile, Harmony was in her apartment, having a cup of tea to calm her nerves after the incident. She was content to hear Sarah settle things in private with the TV station. As this matter could not be blown out of proportion, it was better to resolve it quietly. That's settled, then. Harmony, we've negotiated a deal with the TV station. 
they'll pay us 500,000 in compensation, and we'll stop pursuing the matter. All right, I'm okay with that, Harmony nodded. To her, her greatest gain tonight was experiencing this incident with Ezekiel. Miss Cullen is the one who swapped the script. I wonder who made her do this. But we can't get her to talk anymore. She must have been paid to keep quiet. It's clear as day who's behind this, replied Harmony with a sigh. You mean Catalina, Sarah guessed. Who else besides her has the power to have the TV station at their beck and call? Besides Miss Cullen, I think the interview host might have been paid as well. Sigh, let's avoid giving these kinds of interviews from now on. We'll focus on acting, concluded Sarah. With that, she turned around, only to find that her artist was not listening to her. Rather, she was holding her cup of tea while giggling. In an instant, she realized that Harmony's biggest gain tonight was neither the attention and praise she received on the internet nor the 500,000 in compensation. Instead, it was the special care she had received from Ezekiel. The 5th of May was a big day for the Presgraves, whose beloved daughter was getting married. For this princess of the Presgrave family, who was born with a silver spoon in her mouth, the only hardship she had tasted was the bitterness of an Americano. Now, after preparing herself, she would marry her beloved man and enter into marriage today. Her wedding took place on a private island owned by her family, just like the wedding of her parents and brother. This island, a symbol of happiness and bliss, had always brought good luck to the Presgrave family. Those present at today's wedding were also exceptionally prestigious, for the world's top echelons of the wealthy elite were gathered there. Antoine had also taken leave to come here for a vacation while helping his nephew arrange some matters related to the wedding. Needless to say, the Wyatt family's wealth was unquestionable, so this wedding was bound to be a splendid and grand affair. However, the Wyatts had few friends and relatives, so those who attended the wedding were Jasper's friends from the base. Nevertheless, this did not affect anything, for the Presgrave family's elders would be his most influential support from then on. Ezekiel and his mother also set out the next day, taking his grandmother to the island for a three-day vacation. Today's weather was perfect, with a gentle breeze and warm sunshine. The scenery on the island was breathtaking, and the roses blooming on the island were the most vibrant color. This was an island with a romantic charm, bought by Elliot for his wife after their wedding back then. At the same time, he had painstakingly developed the island into a gathering place for their family reunions. It was time for the wedding. Guests filled the seats in the hall while the handsomely dressed groom stood on the platform, patiently waiting for his bride. The heavy doors of the hall opened. Accompanied by a cool breeze, a graceful and ethereal figure appeared. It was Willow, holding her father's arm and looking indescribably beautiful in a sacred white wedding dress. Standing on the platform, Jasper locked his profound gaze on her the love of his life. Inwardly, Elliot was reluctant to be parted from his daughter. Despite his reluctance, his daughter's happiness took precedence over everything else. So, with peace of mind, he handed his daughter over to this son-in-law, whom he was satisfied with, wishing them a blissful life together. Sitting in the audience was Anastasia, who looked graceful and noble. Seeing how happy her daughter was, she felt happy for her and wished her happiness. The wedding ceremony was simple yet grand. Every word spoken was a commitment, as the bride and groom would spend the rest of their lives hand in hand. In the evening, a pair of special guests finally arrived under the cover of night. They were none other than the recently wedded Zacharias and his wife, carefully placed in a private room, after all, it was inappropriate to expose their identities. The three-day wedding celebration ended on a high note. Guests at the wedding felt at home and content with the courtesy extended by the hosts, while the newlyweds had a perfect wedding. Meanwhile, in Averna, preparations were ongoing for an award ceremony as the city would host a film festival tonight. The red carpet event started at 3 p.m. sharp, and Harmony arrived with the leading actor and the film director. After the events of the last few days, her fan base had grown exponentially. As soon as she appeared on stage, her fans, who had long been waiting in the audience, started cheering for her. She carried herself with composure on stage. Wearing a white chiffon dress, she exuded grace and vivacity. The reporters, cameras were almost all focused on her face, snapping away like crazy. 
Soon, another group of people took the stage. Coincidentally, they were Catalina and the cast of her film. However, her film had only received a lukewarm response, and she did not have much of a fan base herself, thanks to the huge number of controversies about her. Still, for the sake of her popularity, she had hired many fan groups to cheer for her outside today. Not only that, but she had also hired a dedicated team of photographers, ensuring that any images of her uploaded online had to pass her scrutiny. She had failed to frame Harmony last time and had instead paid the latter 500,000 indirectly in compensation. She only learned about this afterward, and it nearly drove her mad. It was equal to her gifting 500,000 to Harmony to boost her popularity. However, she was not going to let Harmony off today. She was willing to use any connections at her disposal to undermine the girl. For instance, she had switched Harmony's seat today, replacing Harmony's name with that of a veteran actor. She intended to set her up against the veteran actor. As Harmony and the director's team entered the hall, the director noticed that her name was not anywhere near his. He said, Harmony, why don't you go up front and take a look? Just take the seat with your name on it. Okay, she thus began searching the rows for her seat. Just then, a staff member approached her, saying, Miss Mayo, your seat is in the first row. Please take your seat there. I'm in the first row. Harmony was taken aback. The first row is usually reserved for bigwigs or people of status, even the most popular actors are mostly placed in the second row. How can I qualify for the front row? Could there be a mistake? How can my seat be in the first row? Would you mind checking the seating arrangements? She grew wary at once. The staff member was responsible for the seating arrangements. Hearing Harmony say that, she replied, All right, let me double check for you. Sure, it's best not to make a mistake with the seating arrangements, said Harmony with a smile. The moment Catalina walked in, she saw Harmony standing in a corner below the stage, looking at her phone. She could not help but frown. Why hasn't she taken her seat in the first row yet? At that moment, a staff member approached Harmony and apologized, I'm sorry, Miss Mayo. It was indeed a mistake by one of our staff members. Your seat was mistakenly swapped with Mr. Frank Holton's. Harmony's heart clenched at once. Frank Holton was a renowned veteran actor. Had she switched seats with him without noticing the mistake, it would have caused a big uproar for her. Despite her inner anger, she remained polite on the surface, saying, it's okay. Good that it is clarified. Please wait a moment while I swap the seat labels for you, said the staff member before hurrying away. As soon as Harmony looked up, she saw Catalina watching her with folded arms. From Catalina's expression, she realized that this seat switching scheme was probably her doing again. She's relentless. Catalina also did not expect Harmony to become so smart as to switch her seat back. Ha, huh, that's not bad. She stepped forward, blocking Harmony's path. Ms. Martin, please stop doing things like this, warned Harmony in a hushed voice. I just can't stand your smugness despite your lack of status and influence. How am I being smug? Harmony frowned. This circle belongs only to the wealthy. Someone like you only deserves to live at the bottom, mocked Catalina. This circle isn't yours. I'll stay if I want to, retorted Harmony. We'll see what happens next. We still have a long way to go. Don't expect an easy time as long as I'm in this circle, replied Catalina before turning around with a sneer. The next moment, however, she instantly transformed into a well-behaved girl with a sweet smile upon seeing a veteran in the industry. Oh, Ms. Depp, it's been a while. How are you doing lately? Let me help you over there, she said sweetly. Seeing Catalina's hypocritical behavior, Harmony felt a deep repugnance. However, she was not going to yield to Catalina's threats just like that. Chapter 2701 Harmony returned to her seat and told Sarah what had just happened, to which the latter responded calmly by advising her to accept her award. Just when Harmony was about to put down her phone, it beeped with another text message. She looked at the message, which turned out to be Ezekiel's. What are you doing? She was surprised to receive the text message. The two had not gotten in touch since the previous incident, so she thought he had already left. I'm attending an awards ceremony, she replied, attaching a picture of the event. 
At that moment, Ezekiel had just disembarked from the yacht after attending Willow's wedding. His mother and grandmother stayed on the island for a two-week vacation, whereas he returned early. He got into his car, looking at the picture sent by Harmony, which showed the name of the film festival's theme. He smiled and texted her, has it started? Seeing this reply, she was caught off guard. She asked on an impulse, are you coming? Sure, I'll come. Then came the prompt reply. Harmony clasped her mouth, unable to hide the happiness in her eyes. Oh, my gosh, he's coming. Ezekiel's convoy headed straight for the film festival. Meanwhile, the film festival's organizers received a call saying that a VIP was coming over. Immediately, a seat was arranged for him in the front row, labeled with the name Ezekiel Weiss. In this circle, there was one thing that held tremendous power wealth. He could easily use his connections to attend any event he wanted. Also, he made a request tonight that he wanted an actress to accompany him. Catalina sat in her seat, turning to glance in Harmony's direction from time to time. Naturally, she could not make trouble as she pleased on such an occasion. This time, she had spent a huge sum of money to secure a small award for her film through the back door, ensuring she would go on stage to receive it. This would increase her exposure and pave the way for her entry into major films in the future. As the red carpet event took time, everyone could only wait here. The awards ceremony would start at 6.30 p.m. At about 6 p.m., the red carpet event ended. At that moment, three imposing black SUVs pulled up on the street outside. Stepping out of one of the cars was a strikingly handsome man who oozed elegance. A few photographers were just about to pack up their gear when they spotted him. Initially surprised, they then lowered their heads and whispered to each other. One of them asked, which film is he from? I've never seen him before. Yeah, me neither. He must be a celebrity, right? He's so handsome. As they debated whether to take pictures of the man, Ezekiel entered the hall. Once inside, he announced his name. The female staff member, her heart fluttering, respectfully escorted him to his seat in the first row. He walked while looking around. Among the crowd of beauties, he immediately spotted a particular figure and could not help but smile. Instead of going over to greet her, he went to his seat instead. Harmony had been staring at her phone, not noticing that the man she had been waiting for had arrived. Just then, Catalina spotted the man first and was filled with surprise. Ezekiel is here, does that mean he'll see me receive the award tonight? However, the staff member from earlier approached Harmony. She lowered her head and said to her, Miss Mayo, I'm afraid you'll need to switch seats. Where will I be seated, then? She asked curiously. Your seat will be in the first row, replied the staff member. Thinking it might be another setup, Harmony waved her hand, saying, there's no need to. I'm not switching seats. I'll stay here. We received instructions from above that you must change seats because a gentleman specifically requested that you sit next to him. She immediately asked, who is that? Just then, the staff member pointed in a particular direction, which Harmony followed with her gaze. Although all she saw was the back of the man's head, it made her mesmerizing eyes widen in surprise. It's him. Ezekiel. He came. Harmony could not help but ask, are you sure I need to change seats? Yes, that's right. Please don't worry, Miss Mayo, said the staff member. She nodded and got up to follow the staff member. Catalina turned and spotted Harmony, too. She curiously watched where the lady was going, only to see the staff member lead her to the first row and seat her next to Ezekiel. He looked up at Harmony with a smile. Clad in a dark gray suit, he seemed to have taken a break from a grand party, looking even more handsome and stylish than all the actors present. Seeing her name placed next to his seat, she sat down and whispered, Why did you switch my seat? What's wrong? Don't you like to sit next to me? He asked curiously. Harmony shook her head with a smile. It's not that I don't like it, but that my status in the industry doesn't merit a seat in the first row yet. With me here, you can sit wherever you want, replied Ezekiel, sizing her up with his eyes. She looked elegant and lovely with her smooth, radiant skin and tip-tilted nose. Her pink lips were alluring with a hint of innocence, but they attracted him the most because he already knew how tender they were. 
Sitting in her seat, Catalina clenched her fists in frustration. How is that possible? How did Harmony qualify for a seat in the first row next to Ezekiel, at that? Damn it. Fuming, she bit her lip, determined to make a fuss about this to get everyone in showbiz to mock Harmony. After all, hierarchy was taken very seriously in this industry, where juniors were not supposed to steal the limelight from their seniors. And sure enough, besides Catalina, others also began to notice this. Those of higher status than Harmony were seated in the second and third rows, making it more conspicuous that she, a relatively new actress, was seated in the first row. How could this not arouse envy among others? Who is that girl? Is she remarkable or something? Asked an actress while staring at Harmony. She's just a rising starlet. There's nothing remarkable about her. Then, why is she sitting there? That seat isn't for her. That's right. How shameless of her to squeeze herself into the first row. I wonder who gave her the nerve. Hearing the voices condemning Harmony from all sides, Catalina felt even more pleased. Harmony has now become a public enemy in the whole industry, hasn't she? No matter how powerful Ezekiel is, he can't always protect her, right? That's unless she marries him and becomes his wife. But given her status, is she good enough for such an elite and prestigious family? Harmony's phone beeped with a message. She looked at it, and it was from Leon Musk, the director of her film. Harmony, why are you sitting in the first row? Now, everyone's got a bone to pick with you. Hurry and ask the staff to get your seat changed. She glanced back in response, noticing the giggling actors and actresses whose gazes showed mockery and disdain toward her. It was as if she had encroached upon their rights by sitting here. Deep down inside, she also understood the need to be modest and keep a low profile to try to gain favor. As a minor actress, she did not have the license to be bold. Even if Ezekiel granted her this privilege, she did not deserve it. Mr. Weiss, M. May I switch back to my previous seat? She asked softly, leaning close to him. Why? He inquired, leaning over to her. It's because I'm, just a newcomer. I can't sit here. It's too conspicuous, she explained. After listening to this, the man turned to look at the actors and actresses behind him. Many of them had not seen his face before, but the moment he turned around, the actresses seated in the rows behind him gasped in astonishment. This guy's handsome face is captivating. Even the male celebrities who came tonight could not compare to him. Who is he? Why is Harmony with him? However, some people remembered the photos from Fashion Week and quickly understood. Isn't this the mysterious wealthy man who escorted Harmony during Fashion Week last time? So, he's also at this awards ceremony. If only we can get to know him. That was the sentiment of almost all female celebrities, and of course, many male celebrities harbored the same thoughts. This man was too perfect. Good. I'll arrange it, Ezekiel said while picking up his phone and dialing a number before requesting the other end. In no time, a staff member received the order, walked over, and said to Harmony and Ezekiel, Mr. Weiss, Miss Mayo, the seats have been rearranged. Please follow me. Harmony felt grateful in her heart. Ezekiel willingly switched from the first row to the third row for her sake. She returned to her seat, and the man sat beside her. When the other artists saw her return to her original seat and sneered internally, they could only scoff at her having some self-awareness of her position in this circle. One had to be aware of their status in this industry, those who did not understand the rules would not thrive. Mr. Weiss, hello, it's nice to meet you. The female artist sitting next to Ezekiel greeted him boldly after overhearing the staff calling him, Mr. Weiss. Thus, she followed suit. He glanced lightly at her and nodded politely without engaging in further conversation. Harmony's heart could not help but twist a bit when she saw this female artist taking the initiative to talk to Ezekiel. The woman who greeted him was Arabella Copeland, a well-known socialite in the industry. It was said that any man she set her sights on could not escape her grasp. Harmony was worried that he might become her target as well. Her worries were justified as Arabella's goal tonight was to get his contact information and then wait to take him down afterward. She wore a seductive champagne-colored dress tonight, which exuded an irresistible charm. She believed he would be attracted to her by sitting beside her. 
If he glanced at her even once, she was confident she could win him over. However, Arabella had already thrown several side glances at Ezekiel, only to find that he had not even looked at her once, leaving her rather disheartened. As the award ceremony was about to begin, the murmurs and whispers died down. Music filled the air with an excited vibe as the host delivered the opening speech, followed by an esteemed veteran artist giving a speech. Harmony's mind was not focused on receiving an award tonight. She was merely nominated for a movie and did not hold high hopes that she would win the Best Actress Award. Meanwhile, Ezekiel's phone lit up momentarily, catching his attention. He picked it up and glanced at the screen, which displayed a respectful message. Mr. Weiss, we sincerely invite you to be our guest of honor tonight to present the Best Actress Award. After reading the message, he inquired, what award is Harmony Mayo receiving? The Best Actress Award, the other party replied. A faint smile curled on his lips as he responded readily, okay. Then, he looked at the girl beside him. Under the lights, she exuded a different kind of aura. Her beautiful face carried a relaxed and comfortable vibe. There was a lack of ambition in her lovely eyes, which gave off a sense of calmness and tranquility. He decided not to tell her about winning the award just yet, as a surprise for her later. Catalina also kept glancing back at Ezekiel multiple times. She was fortunate to be seated in the second row, while Reuben sat on the far left in the fourth row. He also noticed that Harmony and Ezekiel were together. That made him more convinced that she was the one who betrayed him first. So, the reason why she was unwilling to give me her first time is because she'd given it to Ezekiel. He could not help but feel disgusted with her. As such, he directly sent her a message. Harmony, do you have to bring your sugar daddy everywhere now? Aren't you afraid he'll fancy another female artist tonight and dump you? Harmony was listening to the speech attentively when her phone pinged with a message. She glanced at it subconsciously and saw the message from Reuben, which made her grit her teeth in anger without replying. I thought you were pure and clean in the past. I never expected you'd be a courtesan in front of your sugar daddy. How many times are you servicing him at night? These words were truly disgusting. After she read the message, her pretty face flushed with anger. She gripped her phone tightly, bit her lip, and chose not to respond. Shameless people like Reuben would only get more aggressive once they receive more attention. Suddenly, she felt that Catalina was not her enemy but rather someone filtering out the scum for her. Fortunately, Catalina took him away, otherwise, she would never have discovered his true nature. Seeing that Harmony was not responding, Reuben lost interest in humiliating her. Arabella tugged at her neckline intentionally while saying to Ezekiel, Oh my! It's hot in here. Is the air conditioning even on? I'm sweating. After speaking, she deliberately leaned her ample upper body toward Ezekiel's side. If he turned his head, he would surely notice it. However, he seemed oblivious and was entirely focused on the program on stage, paying no attention to her. She felt bored and then glanced at Harmony jealously. After the speech on stage concluded, the awarding of team awards began. Harmony heard her crew winning another award, so she was genuinely happy. The director personally went on stage to receive the prize, and Ezekiel leaned over to praise, great job. Your team has won another award. She also responded happily, yes. I'm happy for our director. Do you think you'll win an award tonight? He could not help but ask. Harmony had a good sense of self-awareness, so she shook her head and said, the works tonight are all too outstanding. I know I don't have the strength to win an award yet. Ezekiel smiled while waiting to unveil the answer later. Various awards were presented one after another, and Catalina's crew won the Best Design Award. When she went on stage to receive it, she acted pretentiously by taking the microphone from the host and saying a few words. Soon, the awards escalated from smaller to more significant categories. The first to be presented was the Individual Achievement Awards. The most eye-catching awards of the night were the Golden Peony Award and the Black Hawk Award, equivalent to Best Actress and Best Actor Awards. Eventually, almost all of the awards were presented, and it was around 8.30 p.m. The most anticipated award in this circle was about to be revealed. Soon, the nominated films for the night appeared on the big screen, and Harmony saw her movie listed there, exciting her. 
Being nominated was already a recognition. After that, it was the thrilling moment of unveiling the winner. Next, we will announce tonight's biggest award. First up is the winner of the Golden Peony Award. Who could it be? Who will win this award? The host on stage began to stir up the atmosphere. Even the music was changed to a more drumming rhythm, stimulating everyone's nerves and making everyone excited and nervous. All the female artists nominated tonight were excited as they covered their red lips and fantasized about winning the award for themselves. Next, we invite our guest of honor to come on stage and reveal the answer. We invite Mr. Ezekiel, president of the Weiss Group International, to be our guest presenter. Let us welcome him. When the host read this name, it sounded exceptionally powerful. Harmony also turned her head in astonishment to look at Ezekiel on stage. Oh my, he's the one presenting the award. Wait, it's you. She was genuinely surprised because this man had not mentioned this before his arrival. Before Ezekiel stood up, he leaned close to her ear and whispered, see you in a bit. After saying that, he straightened his suit and got up. In the beam of light falling on him, he looked like a perfectly walking piece of art that was elegant and captivating as he stepped onto the stage. His face was enlarged on that large screen, and it was a face that made every woman's heart race. Harmony felt a bit bewildered. What did Ezekiel mean just now by saying, see you in a bit? Where would they meet? Did it mean that after presenting the award, he wouldn't return to his seat? Was he planning to leave from the backstage? That was what Harmony presumed. She looked toward the stage excitedly and saw Ezekiel receiving the envelope containing tonight's award. His slender fingers opened it and took out a card, which revealed the name written on it. Mr. Weiss, I believe you already know tonight's winner of the Golden Peony Award. Please announce it for us, the host said excitedly. Ezekiel took the microphone, looked down at the audience, and, in his deep, captivating voice, announced a name. Harmony Mayo. Just as Harmony was mesmerized by Ezekiel's graceful demeanor, she suddenly heard her name, and her mind felt like it exploded, as if she had misheard it. Was it her imagination? Did Ezekiel just say her name? Did she hear things? At that moment, the director from the row behind her hurried over and tapped her. Harmony, what are you doing standing there? Hurry up and go receive the award. Is it really me? She turned to ask the director because she wasn't sure if it was really her. Yes, it's you, Miss Harmony Mayo, please come on stage. Ezekiel's voice was gentle yet full of authority on stage, and his smiling demeanor directly charmed the group of women below the stage. It was unbelievable. Harmony confirmed it, it was indeed her. She stood up and felt a bit awkward as she walked under the admiring gazes of everyone. Catalina clenched her fists in jealousy. How could it be Harmony? Was there something fishy here? It must be because of Ezekiel's connections that Harmony was chosen. It's her again. She just got the Best Actress Award recently. Is she going to take all the awards this year? One female artist complained. Yeah, another agreed. Catalina joined their conversation, saying, the man on stage is Harmony's sugar daddy. Who can compete with her? How did she manage to hook up with this man? I've never heard of this president of the Weiss Group. Of course, you haven't heard of him. He's from Dansbury, and half of Dansbury's assets belong to his family, Catalina said jealously. Other artists shook their heads and wondered how Harmony managed to entice him. Harmony was extremely excited, and her mind was in a daze. As she ascended the steps to the stage, she tripped and stumbled down before kneeling on the stairs. Just when she felt utterly embarrassed and wished she could disappear on the spot, a large hand reached out in front of her. She extended her hand without a word. He grasped it, pulled her up, and then held her waist. He guided her to the center of the stage. Miss Mayo, you've won another award. Can you share your feelings? The host came over for a quick interview. I'm extremely excited. I can't believe it, Harmony answered truthfully. Ha ha. Miss Mayo, you're so honest, but this is a testament to your ability. You deserve it. The host laughed. Next, let's invite our guest of honor, Mr. Weiss, to present tonight's Golden Peony Award to Miss Harmony Mayo. Congratulations. The audience erupted in applause. Meanwhile, at the fifth row on the left, Reuben looked like he had been struck by a nerve, and his face was extremely unsightly. 
How could he feel happy seeing Harmony not only have a wealthy sugar daddy but also thrive in her career? As the staff brought the trophy on a tray, Ezekiel reached out, picked it up, and handed it to Harmony. Congratulations, Miss Mayo. Tears of excitement welled up in Harmony's eyes. She looked up at the smiling man and finally realized that when he said, see you in a bit, he meant seeing her on stage. So, he knew she was going to receive the award. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Harmony accepted the award and nodded at him gratefully. Let's take a photo together. Please look at the camera, the host suggested insightfully. Ezekiel placed his arm lightly around Harmony's shoulder, and both of them smiled at the camera. The camera captured their moment. They were a pair of enviable individuals. Meanwhile, Catalina was in the restroom as she instructed her internet ghostwriters, go all out and attack her. Find any faults from tonight and use them against her. Even before Harmony had left the award ceremony, attacks against her had already started online. First, they spread rumors about the unspeakable secrets behind her award and insinuated she obtained it by sleeping with a high-ranking individual. Following that, some online provocateurs released chat records that seemed to be from insiders. They stated that Harmony wanted to move to the front row, got warned by the staff, and had to return to her original seat. There were also claims that as a junior, she disrespected her seniors, and the reason she won was not because she outperformed others in the nomination but because she schemed to snatch away the award behind the scenes. These three accusations were enough to tarnish Harmony's reputation thoroughly, and they created an impression of a newcomer using any means to climb to the top. Of course, Harmony's fans tried to counter these claims online, but the sheer number of internet ghostwriters drowned out their voices. Harmony and Ezekiel stepped out of the award ceremony into the evening breeze. She appeared stunning tonight. Perhaps it was because she received an award, or perhaps it was this man's presence. Tonight, she exuded a radiant charm like that of the moonlight. He couldn't help but look at her when he stood on the steps outside the event venue. She seemed to have many things she wanted to say to him, yet she lacked the courage because she couldn't grasp his true intentions toward her. Was it affection? are just assistance out of kindness. Therefore, she maintained a polite demeanor. Mr. Weiss, thank you for presenting me with the award tonight. You've given me an unforgettable evening. Likewise, I'm honored to present you with this trophy. Of course, you truly deserve it, Ezekiel said. Harmony pursed her lips and had a question that had been troubling her. She didn't know if she should ask him. Mr. Weiss, I have a question, but I'm not sure if I should ask you. Go ahead. I'll answer any questions truthfully. Ezekiel raised an eyebrow. Was I able to get this award tonight because of your connections? Harmony asked curiously because she never harbored hopes of winning tonight as she knew how exceptional the other works were. He folded his arms, then shook his head confidently. It wasn't because of my connections. I only received the notification to present the trophy. Harmony's beautiful eyes widened slightly. Really? You are outstanding, and you deserve this award, he comforted her. Only then did she breathe a sigh of relief. No matter how much criticism she received, it didn't matter. Upon hearing Ezekiel's words, she finally accepted the award with peace of mind. Harmony, I've been looking everywhere for you. Sarah found her way over, and upon seeing Ezekiel, she exclaimed excitedly, Mr. Weiss, so you were here to present the award to Harmony. Ezekiel smiled faintly when he saw her manager arrive. I'll take my leave then. Sure, take care. Harmony watched him leave. She kept her eyes on him as he walked toward his convoy until he got into the car. Sarah looked at her, then at the departing car, and couldn't help but cough lightly. He's gone far. What's there left to see? Harmony's cheeks reddened, and she handed the trophy to Sarah. Sarah, can you hold this for me? You've won another award. That's great. Sarah shared her joy but quickly cautioned her. Harmony, there's a lot of negativity about you on the internet now. Don't go online, and don't let it affect your mood. Perhaps I offended too many people tonight, Harmony remarked. Many were secretly jealous of her getting this award. In this circle, the resources were limited. She took some of it, which naturally meant someone else got less. Hence, it was customary for people to attack her. Several factions of internet ghostwriters were vehemently attacking her, 
causing her to trend as the top topic, titled, Digging Deep into the Rising Star's Past. Clicking into the content would reveal Harmony's embarrassing moments from her early acting days. It was critiqued one by one, almost as if they aimed to vilify her publicly. Catalina sat in her car and admired the handiwork funded by herself, feeling proud. Ruben remained silent while sitting beside her. Tonight, he felt quite discontented too. Harmony receiving the award felt like an unseen blow to him. Don't look so down. Harmony won't be able to hold on for much longer, Catalina said to him. Didn't you see the way that man treated her tonight? He's definitely going to promote her. Catalina, aren't you quite resourceful? Why haven't you pulled her down? Ruben asked. Catalina sneered. Why are you in such a hurry? Do you think I can't handle a minor figure like Harmony? You better make her leave this circle. I feel sick just seeing her, he said in frustration. She glanced at him and suddenly realized something. She seemed to have done Harmony a favor by eliminating a tasteless and graceless jerk for her. Instead, he ended up in her hands. She couldn't shake him off now. Darn it. She had inadvertently done a good deed, which allowed Harmony to meet someone like Ezekiel. Back at the hotel, Ezekiel was handling work-related matters. Meanwhile, his assistant, Mars Holland, was surfing the internet. Soon, he stumbled upon some information and murmured, why is Miss Mayo being criticized so harshly? Ezekiel paused from his work and reached out. Who's criticizing her? The netizens. Did she offend someone by winning the award tonight? Ezekiel stopped what he was doing and gestured. Show me. Mars immediately handed over the tablet. Ezekiel browsed through a post about Harmony by the anti-fan, which was filled with malicious language. He was ridiculing Harmony's education and her family background. At that moment, a line of text struck directly at his heart, causing his pupils to dilate. She was an orphan. Ezekiel had thought Harmony came from an ordinary family background, at least with both parents alive. But unexpectedly, he stumbled upon her background online and learned that both her parents were deceased. She's a jinx who causes misfortune to those around her. She's destined to be alone and without support. It was a netizen's comment about her. Upon seeing this sentence, Ezekiel felt a surge of anger. Harmony had already suffered the loss of both her parents, yet these people were using her pain to attack her. Mars, contact Dan's crew and tell them to come to Averna for promotion this time. I want him to bring the lead actors here and join Harmony for the promotion. Wow, Miss Mayo's status will be elevated to that of an international movie star with just a word from you. Mars chuckled and then asked nosily, Mr. Weiss, do you like Miss Mayo? Don't pry into my personal matters. Follow my instructions and get it done by next month. Understood. I'll make sure to boost Miss Mayo's popularity for you. Ezekiel continued to scroll through the tablet and ignored the hateful comments. He saw a glimpse of Harmony's struggles in this circle, from her early days facing various hardships to her simultaneous filming and rigorous efforts to enroll in the film academy. He could see she was a hard-working and determined individual. Such a person shouldn't be subjected to malicious attacks even if she was not praised by others. At night, Harmony took a shower. Her long hair was draped over as she leaned on the couch comfortably while lost in thought. She seemed to have developed a liking for spacing out lately. On the other hand, Sarah became busy. Even though Harmony was heavily criticized, her acting skills were acknowledged. After all, being criticized was a form of publicity. Sarah had at least ten scripts in her hand and was choosing earnestly. Simultaneously, she handed a few scripts to Harmony. Here, these are the ones I've selected. Take a look and see which one you would like to film. Harmony snapped out of her reverie, picked up the scripts, and flipped through them. They used to plead with production crews for acting roles in the past, but now, many roles would come knocking at their door. The shooting period for TV dramas is long, so let's hold off on those for now. You've already entered the movie industry, so let's consider film roles. Sarah, let's choose a script with fewer intimate scenes. Harmony suggested. Sure, we'll choose one with fewer intimate scenes. Sarah accommodated her mood. Then, she put down the scripts and asked sincerely, Harmony, you're not really falling for Mr. Weiss, are you? Something tugged at Harmony's heartstrings. She shook her head. No, 
I'm not. Don't hide your thoughts from me. Tell me the truth. I'll see if I can offer you some advice. Liking someone is not a crime. Saying it out loud won't make us embarrassed, right? Sarah saw through her thoughts. Indeed, Harmony had a lot on her mind, and Sarah was the only one she could confide in. Sarah genuinely cared for her. Harmony was prompted as she pursed her lips and nodded at Sarah. Yes, I like him. Sarah chuckled. It's hard for any woman not to like him. Even I like him. Harmony lifted her head and looked at Sarah in shock. Sarah, you. Don't misunderstand me. I'm so much older than him. I like him, but I'm more of an old fan. Sarah laughed as she added. Sarah, I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to show my feelings in front of him and even more afraid of him finding out that I like him. I understand. He's too noble and perfect. You fear you're not qualified to fall for him, Sarah said. Yes, that's exactly how I feel. He's right in front of me, yet I feel like he's unreachable. I'm afraid of causing him trouble, disrupting his life, and even more afraid that I won't see him again. I've never felt so inferior in front of someone. Harmony's expression turned desolate. Sarah looked at her with sympathy, walked over, and hugged her. You're outstanding too. Don't belittle yourself. Just stay calm. If Mr. Weiss likes you, he'll definitely show it. Harmony sighed in relief. Speaking out indeed made her feel better. She nodded. Okay, I understand. Around 10 a.m. the next day, Harmony was preparing to go out to meet a director when her phone rang. She picked it up, and her heart raced it was Ezekiel. Hello, Mr. Weiss. Let's have lunch together at noon. Ezekiel invited her. At noon, if you're busy. Not at all. I'm free, Harmony replied hurriedly. A low chuckle came from the other end. Great, I'll come to pick you up at noon. Send me the address to your apartment. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. As soon as she finished, she asked impulsively, Mr. Weiss, would you be willing to have a meal at my place at noon? I'll cook. Ezekiel surprisingly agreed. That's a good idea. I've grown tired of outside food. I'd like to taste your cooking. Okay, I'll go buy groceries. Is there anything specific you'd like to eat? Just make something you're good at. I'm not picky, Ezekiel said. All right, see you later. Harmony smiled. Her day had suddenly become very meaningful. After she hung up the phone, Sarah, who was in front, asked, aren't we going to meet Director Page? Sarah, I've invited Mr. Weiss to my place for lunch at noon. I won't go meet Director Page. Can you help me cancel the appointment? Sarah nodded. All right, I'll help you cancel it. Let's go to the grocery store together. I can go by myself. It's better for you to stay indoors for now. There are still many crazy fans out there. It's okay. I want to pick out the groceries personally. Harmony smiled. Her mind immediately conjured up her usual signature dishes. She couldn't afford to mess up today. At the grocery store, Harmony wore a mask and pushed the cart while shopping with Sarah. By the time they finished shopping, it was already 11 a.m. Harmony hurried back home to tidy up. She bought a 120-square-meter apartment and decorated it in a very simple and minimalist style that she liked. After Sarah dropped her off at home, she said, Harmony, it's rare for you to spend time alone with Mr. Weiss. Seize the opportunity. Harmony's cheeks blushed. Sarah, don't get weird ideas. Sarah laughed heartily and then left. Harmony's heart was still beating rapidly. She looked at her home and began tidying it up carefully. She was a very clean person, and her entire house was almost spotless. Ezekiel set off from the hotel. He didn't bring along any bodyguards and drove alone to Harmony's residential area. After registering at the gate, he entered. Upon entering the elevator, two girls, who were engrossed in their phones, suddenly glanced outside to see a man holding flowers entering the elevator. Their hearts skipped a beat. My goodness, he's so handsome. Are the flowers for his girlfriend? Ezekiel pressed the button for the 18th floor. It was his first time going to a girl's house alone, so he bought flowers on the way. He hoped that Harmony would like them. Harmony heard the doorbell and hurriedly ran out of the kitchen. As she peered through the peephole, she saw Ezekiel. Then, she reached out and opened the door. 
She was greeted by not only the handsome face of the man but also a bouquet of roses emitting fragrance. Her heart rate skyrocketed. This man was unexpectedly so romantic. He even brought flowers for her. For you. I hope you like them, Ezekiel said in a low voice, his deep gaze filled with anticipation. I like them a lot. Thank you. Please come in. Harmony opened the door wider to welcome him in and brought out a pair of men's sandals she had prepared beforehand. Ezekiel walked into her home and immediately noticed her good taste. Although it wasn't large, it was extremely cozy. Your home is very cozy, Ezekiel complimented. Harmony placed the flowers on the cabinet, feeling a bit nervous and excited. Mr. Weiss, as long as you don't mind it. Ezekiel turned his head and smiled. Of course not. She suddenly noticed that this man's pupils weren't purely black but had an amber hue. It was an unusual and charming trait. Why would I mind? I like your house. Ezekiel then asked, can I take a look around? Harmony nodded. Of course. Feel free to look around. I'll be in the kitchen. Ezekiel nodded and began to tour the place. Although the interior was just over 90 square meters, because she only had a master bedroom, other areas were relatively spacious. He looked at her study room, where a few rays of sunlight streamed onto the desk, showcasing the potted plants and giving it a thriving ambiance. He didn't enter her master bedroom but found many other areas in her home worth stopping and admiring. For instance, her photo wall. The wall displayed pictures meticulously arranged by age, from her infancy to childhood, teenage years, and adulthood. He watched a girl grow up proportionally. She was adorable and beautiful as a child, had the youthfulness and innocence of adolescence, and had a graceful and sweet demeanor as an adult. Ezekiel took out his phone and snapped a few pictures of the photo wall. He intended to savor them later. Among those photos, aside from the ones with her parents, there were only portrait pictures of her, without any other men in sight. He found himself increasingly drawn to her, and he found her even more attractive. At that moment, Harmony's phone rang, but she was washing vegetables in the kitchen and didn't hear it. Ezekiel glanced at the screen and was surprised to see the word, jerk, displayed apparently, it was a call from Reuben. Harmony seemed to have forgotten to block his number so he could still call her. Ezekiel hesitated for only a couple of seconds before reaching for Harmony's phone and pressing the answer button. A man's voice came from the other end, and he sounded somewhat intoxicated. Harmony, is that you? Ezekiel didn't say anything, which made Reuben think that Harmony was deliberately staying silent. Reuben sounded quite despondent. I know you're listening. Can I talk to you? I really, really want to talk to you. Ezekiel frowned. As a man, he knew very well that this was just Reuben's tactic. Reuben was trying to win Harmony's sympathy by acting forlorn. I've been suffering a lot lately. I miss you so much. I admit I'm scum, but Harmony, you must admit that I'm a gentleman. We've been together for five years. You didn't let me touch you, so I haven't touched you in five years. This proves how much I love you. Do you know that? Ezekiel's pupil slightly contracted. He hadn't expected to hear such news. Because I couldn't bear to touch you. I promised you that we would keep the most beautiful moment for our wedding night. Who could endure five years for you just because of one sentence? Only I would do that. But you. You turned around and gave your first night to someone else. You gave it to that scoundrel. Do you think that's fair to me, Harmony? Are you listening? I regret it so much. If we were together, would you not leave me? Reuben obviously sounded intoxicated, and there was a hint of incoherence in his words. Is he better than me? Do you know what I can do? You haven't experienced my skills yet. I'm definitely not inferior to him. Harmony, do you want to try it out with me sometime? Ezekiel's eyebrows furrowed. What nonsense was this SC asterisk MBAG talking about? His relationship with Harmony was clearly pure and innocent. I won't let you down, Harmony. As long as you say the word, I'll prove that I'm not worse than Ezekiel. Can I sleep with you? Even if it's just for one night. Ezekiel raised his head, only to notice that the water in the kitchen had stopped running. Harmony might come out soon. He felt a hint of nervousness and immediately hung up Reuben's call. He didn't want Harmony to know that he had eavesdropped on her call and heard so much of her private matters. 
When she came out, he was still sitting a bit tensely and said, your phone rang just now, and I rejected the call. Harmony walked over, glanced at her phone, and found it was from Ruben. She couldn't help but express her anger. I actually forgot to block him. After saying that, she intended to block Ruben, but Ruben's call came in again. She hung up directly and blocked his number promptly. However, she didn't know that Ezekiel had just listened to nearly three minutes of the call. Is everything okay? Ezekiel asked as he looked at her. It's fine. It's just that seeing this call affects my mood. Delete it and never contact him again, then, Ezekiel said with a tone that carried a hint of dominance. After hearing Reuben's extremely vulgar words just now, he hoped this jerk would never harass her again. Harmony blocked the number and placed her phone down. Please wait for a bit. I'll go cook. Do you need any help? Ezekiel asked, smiling. She waved her hand quickly. No need. I can handle it myself. How about a cup of tea for you? All right. Ezekiel nodded. His days were usually packed with work, social engagements, and meetings. But right here, he was suddenly free. It seemed like he had plenty of time and patience to wait. He felt a sense of enjoying life here. I don't have disposable cups here, so if you don't mind, you can use mine, Harmony said somewhat embarrassedly because she had only used cups at home. Ezekiel raised an eyebrow in a dashing fashion. Your cup looks very nice. I like it a lot. She saw that he not only said it but also poured a cup of tea and took a sip. It proved how much he didn't mind. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.